So, from WWF WrestleMania 2000, April 2nd of the year 2000. God damn. Yeah, how about that? Exactly. Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys in the ladder match. So this was the first, not the first ladder match from WrestleMania, but the first super crazy tag team, multi-tag team, three-way ladder match from WrestleMania, which became you know, a, a tradition between these three teams. It led to the Money in the Bank match. Killed so, a bunch of dudes, Pat practically. Uh, some of them in this match, actually. Yeah. So we could go move by move, but here's the basic thing. Six men came out. Five of them were incredibly scared and nervous and expressed nothing throughout the match but fear and then pain. <laughs> uh, they did all sorts of crazy, insane shit. The only one who showed any kind of emotion throughout was Bubba Ray Dudley. I thought he was unquestionably the star of this match. Yes. He was scary when he had to be scary. He was selling when he had to be in pain. He was aggressive at the right times. He was cowardly at the right times. He was the only one of this who came off as any kind of character, any kind of star. The others were five above average sized athletic dudes doing absolutely crazy shit. Crash dummies. Yes, actually. Let me tell you what this match was, Vinny. All right. This was not the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon ladder match. No. Where they had a professional wrestling match and there were ladders. Yeah. This was, however many minutes it was, 20, 22 minutes of guys setting shit up so they could fall through it. Yes. Fair. For 22 minutes we saw this. And it wasn't bad. Oh, no. I, I would classify this as a very good ladder match. I would not say it was a great ladder match. The one thing that I will give them that is different from the ladder matches today, especially I noticed it with with Bubba Ray, is they would set up a stunt and they would try to pull the stunt off in a way where they would take a safe bump. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So, like, Bubba gave somebody a cutter off the ladder and, like, he set it up and he jumped perfectly and he fell perfectly on his back and they fell perfectly on their front and they bounced high in the air and it was from a great height, but it was, like, a bump. You know what I mean? Yes. Ladder matches today, there's there's some of that, but like sometimes these fucking guys just they just crash through shit. Nobody here went through a ladder. No, they go through a ladder or they they crash through something and they're upside down and backwards and yeah. they're just it is like a a a car wreck or or they're falling off shit. This was like wrestling bumps in the middle of a ladder match. So from that perspective, it probably was not as I don't want to say it wasn't as dangerous because all these guys ended up fucked up. But let's just put it this way. These guys ended up fucked up doing this match. So the guys that are doing the shit nowadays are going to end up way more fucked up than these guys. That spot particularly that you were talking about where Bubba did the cutter, they were literally maybe 18 inches taller or up farther than the top rope. Yeah, they didn't do anything that crazy. And it got one of the biggest pops of the match. There, there, There's more craziness to come with tables, ladders, and chairs in WWE for sure. the next few years. Yes, there Until everyone starts practically being retired. I called my son in to watch this because, you know, it's a historic match. I, he, hey, check this out. He was unmoved. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he had just seen, a, it's a bunch of dudes doing shit. He yeah. has seen so much more chaos. Yeah. Like, let me ask matches. you a question. What was the story of this match? Uh, you setting stuff up and then falling through it. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I told this story, but when we went to wrestle the Rock and Roll Express, they have no idea who Tom and I are. They know that Tom did UFC, mm -hmm. so they have to repeatedly tell him that it's fake. Right. Yeah. They want him to kill him. This is all Ricky, by the way. Robert doesn't say anything. <laughs> okay. So. Hard to believe. Yeah. We're, we're back there and he we're like, looks at you. what do you guys want to do? And they're like, oh, what do you want to do? The, how, how every match layout starts. Yes. No, what do you want to do? Well, what do you want to do? So It's like trying to get a, go on a date with my wife. Finally, Ricky, he sort of sits back a little. He gets that old veteran look on his face. And he begins to give a speech. Mm. He says, What's the story going to be of this match? A match has got to have a story. He pauses. Like he's dropped profound wisdom on us. <laughs> there should be a story in this fucking match. I never down. thought about that before. So he just goes on this big thing about how it's more important to tell a story than to have a bunch of moves. Mm. So what's the story of the match? Now, quite frankly, going back and watching that match, I have no idea what story he came up with. <laughs> he just did a match. But the point is, 
Like, these guys did not go into the back and go, what's the story of this match? No. Unless the story was, well, we're all going to fucking kill each other, and then, like, somebody's going to win. Mm. I don't even remember who. That's how much of a clusterfuck this thing was. And, like, everyone's going to cheer, and it's going to be legendary, but at the end of the day, there was no story to this match. No. Edge and Christian won, right? Yes. Standing on the table. Win. Yes. Okay. Yeah, what were they going to do with that table on top of both those highlights? Jump off of it. They, they, Are you kidding me? There they, was a table underneath it. They Did, weren't going to crash through it. No, the, the table was up there so Edge and Christian could stand on it and win together. Right. Yeah. But, but in theory, what were they going to do? Why did the Dudleys put it up there? Right. They were going to, because they were going to throw somebody off of it. Okay. Which threw is something else. Which is basically what ended up happening. Yes, that, that was the story of this entire match here. Getting back to your story. point about uh, how they were, they were doing things... You know, I don't want to say safe, but as controlled as it could possibly be. Safe-ish. More safe-ish. controlled than sometimes you see now. The biggest bump in the entire match, or at least the biggest spot in the entire match, uh, Bubba's brawling up the aisle, and he gets laid across the table, mm-hmm. and there's there is a ladder that is at least 12 feet tall. At least. Maybe more. And Jeff climbs to the very, very tippy top, ignoring the safety label, where it says, do not climb on or, on or above this step. Mm-hmm. And he does a big sent on through the table. And it's huge, and it's scary. And I couldn't help but note, the, the, back when they had good camera work, the camera's like on the ground looking up. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like, massive. Jeff is looking, like he's looking out, jumping off the top of the Empire State like Building. the wall yes. was up there? Yeah, yeah exactly. He's, like, he's up there with yes. the wall. Yes. Yeah. But the bump itself, the idea, I think, would be that Jeff would land on Bubba with his back and then roll over and basically land on his feet on the floor. That's not what happened. So what actually happened is the table broke and he landed on his ass. I don't and know how he didn't break his tailbone. I don't. He's either. Jeff Hardy. He's, he's indestructible. He's, he's still a main eventer on SmackDown today. That is doing matches. Unbelievable. That's literally unbelievable. But yeah, eventually uh, Matt and Christian were fighting on top of the table that was on top of two ladders. Edge came up behind Matt and pushed him off through a table in the ring. And Edge and Christian stood on top of that table and they grabbed the belts and they won. Very good match. It was very, very good. Bubba's totally the star. Absolutely. And uh, and that was that. So this Benoit, Jericho, Kurt Angle match, Ricky Morton may have been the agent. Hmm. What's the story of this match? Well, it's simple. Kurt Angle has two belts. Mm-hmm. He's going to leave with zero belts, mm-hmm. but he will not be beaten. And that's what they did. And quite frankly, it was fine, but... I thought the Chris Benoit Taz match on Raw was like ten times better than oh, this for different reasons. This, yes. this, I, I wrote at the time, and if I went back and thought about it, this may not be true. I thought this had to be the worst media match for any of these three dudes. It is just guy A doesn't move on guy B, and then turns around and guy C cuts him off. Repeat, repeat, repeat. It's I don't know, fifteen minutes or so. It's the same pace throughout. There's n- nothing. I, I, I hate their, their There's complete. nothing you can remember about this match. No, it's completely forgettable. Yes. I hate I hate when they hammer the phrase building momentum into your head. But there's a reason guys build momentum in matches is so that when that momentum comes to a halt, you know, it's a key point in the match. Something memorable has happened. Something an important uh, plot twist in the story of the match has happened. There weren't any of those here. Three guys did moves for ten minutes. They did a finish. They Benoit did. beat Jericho in the first. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Jericho beat Benoit in the second. Yep. They both won. First, the icy titles on the line first. Yeah. That was weird. So the big climactic finish is for the coveted Euro- European, European title. title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, you know, Kurt Angle never was beaten by anybody here. There, there, there was nobody running wild for any length of time. Nobody got cut off. There was no, like, big big uh, alliance and then a betrayal down the line. It's just random shit for 20 minutes with two finishes. And it was I, 13, to be fair. Whichever it was. But Benoit wins the icy title. He gets uh, It was the headbutt, right? Yes. I don't remember. But point is, he, he, he covers Jericho. The ref counts three. His music plays, and the second fall starts in five seconds. So it's it, it was to the ring. <laughs> there was nothing done to let that title win sink in. So just just a blah match, man. It wasn't bad, but no. it was so not good. It was just there. That was a very good definition of just there. This match was It was fine. just a match on the card. And Benoit won the title in the first fall with a headbutt. The second fall, he dove off the top rope for the headbutt. Jericho moved, hit the lion salt, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. I've already forgotten. But I remember Jericho getting being like a geek in the first fall, and then when he wins in the second fall, he's really like stealing the pin on somebody. So he, yeah. It was not a good match for well, Benoit missed the headbutt. Yeah. Well, yeah. according to Dave, everyone, mm-hmm. that was still the second best match on the show. Uh, I, I, I believe so. that. Thank God we didn't watch anything else. I believe that. 
And then, oh, this, 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 this main <clears> event. <throat> 36 minutes and 28 seconds. It is an elimination match. So I didn't even remember that. I thought it was just a four-way. Same here. I thought, I thought it was going to be like a 18-minute four-way. Yep. And we were going to have a winner that was Triple H, and we were going to go home. What this was was the McMahons not wrestling in the main event, but still being the main event. Yes. Obviously, yes. So... Now, I will say this. The the first half of this, when it's a four-way, and then Big Show's out, and then it's a three-way, that was perfectly fine. Probably all right. It, it was better than the Angle Benoit Jericho three-way. Then once it gets down to Hunter and Rock, and they go for another half hour, and I'm watching Vince McMahon throw a bunch of punches. I'm watching Shane do everything. I'm watching Stephanie McMahon act. This is bad. So... They did have a story here. Each, each fall had its own story. There was actually a, a, a saga in this match. The first fall was, the story was, the Big Show is a scary giant. And he can destroy any one of these three men whenever he wants to. And he does for a long time. And then they decide, you know what? There's three of us. Let's get him. And they triple team him to death. And eventually Rock pins him with a rock bottom. So it took yes. three men to be the giant. Yes. That was fine. Fine. And, and, and I will say this also, Big Show looked great killing these men. So now it's a three-way. It's Hunter, Rock, and Foley. Now, the first few minutes of this is hysterical because what they actually did was the Rock and Sock connection double-teamed Triple H. Mm -hmm. They were beating him in the ring. They were beating him out of the ring. They were hitting him with weapons. And I, in my head, knowing how this match ends... <laughs> The story is Triple H is facing overwhelming odds and surviving, finding a way to survive. Huntor the Great. He was, he was unstoppable. They're using weapons on him. He's fighting back, and Cactus tried to just use barbed wire, but he, that can't stop him. He'll take it and use it against you. Finally, finally, the key to the second fall is it's a story of betrayal when Mick Foley stabs the rock in the back. Oh, my God. The mm. people boo Mick Foley like crazy, and yes. his, he's coming back here. His his first match back after retirement a month ago. Yeah. He comes back and he turns on the fucking rock and they boo his ass out of the building. It's like... The and then he gets eliminated and it was like, why was he even in here? I mean, the answer the answer for him was the money. Mm -hmm. But the answer for like WrestleMania is, I have no fucking idea why he was back. The best thing was watching Linda cheer Mick on. Go, Mick. Come on, Mick. Go, Mick! She actually raised her voice, but it was still generic. But, like, what was the point of this? Just do They had to get... Here's the thing. They had to get Linda on TV. That was, yes. yes. Okay. No, no one about the show, Brian, if Linda was I on I understand it. you wanted Hunter there, <laughs> and you wanted Shane, and you wanted Vince, and you wanted Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you wanted... Or the three McMahons. Shane, Stephanie, and Vince. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Fine. Why the fuck did we need Linda there? We didn't. And if we didn't need Linda there, then we didn't need to bring Foley back for this this totally useless thing. I'm happy for Foley; he made probably a million dollars. Good for him for this for this one night of action. Mm -hmm. But but fuck, as a viewer, if you're a Mick Foley fan, it's like well, that was depressing. He <laughs> showed up and he fucking failed again. Hunter beat the shit out of him, pinned him with his he, fucking move again. He showed up. He went back on his word. Yep. <laughs> effectively flipped off, uh, screwed the Rock and his own fans. Yes. And then failed and got beat. Yes. And he looked bad in the process because as they're double teaming the Rock, they lay him out in the announce desk and they Foley goes up to do the elbow off the middle rope through the, through the announce oh. desk. Foley's knees retired before the rest of him did. He did not get there. He crashed sternum first into the desk. Oh. The desk did not break. Mick Foley did. He's on the ground heaving, trying to catch his breath. Now, Hunter, at this point, briefly panics. Yes. He must try to break this table. And he jumps off the uh, uh, other announce desk as fast as he can, jumps on the table, still won't break. He scurries up. He's pushing announcers out of the way. Move, move. Jumps on the barricade. He jumps off it. Finally, it kind of like leans over. Mm -hmm. No one came out of this looking good. And then he just threw Foley in the ring and pedigreed him and pinned him. Well, to be fair, he pedigreed him and he kicked out, and then he pedigreed him on a That's, chair. That is true. That didn't and happen. And pinned him. So they gave Foley that one last kick out. Here's your meaning. Thank Foley. God. Yeah. <laughs> that rehabbed everything. So Foley goes to leave, and he looks up at the monitor, the big, the big screen, and he's so angry at Hunter, he runs back, he grabs the barbed wire and attack him, because Hunter Hearst Helmsley has now been sabotaged. He's been screwed by a man who's uh, legally out of the match. He's been hit with a weapon. Look at these odds he must overcome. 
So they fought, and they fought. Can I throw in here that during this match, knowing what was going to happen, and knowing what was going to happen on Raw the next day, Vince is beating the shit out of Hunter. Yeah. What? I, I don't know. They just had to throw that in there to fool you? It's clear by the end of Raw, they didn't know why. They, they, they knew what was going to happen, but they did not have a reason why. I was just baffled here. So, Shane's in the ring. Vince is beating up Hunter. It sucks. Vince is beating up Shane. It sucks worse. Stephanie's acting. It sucks most. She, like, they have to... Everything that happens in this ring, there'll be a punch or a stomp or a slam or a clothesline, and they will cut to Stephanie on the floor, mm. who has the same bug-eyed, slack-jawed expression every single time. For like 15 minutes. This goes on forever. So... Vince at one point is knocked out with a monitor. He leaves, but then he makes his big triumphant return. Well, first he he gigs, kinda the old Brian Alvarez gig, which and is still better than Hunter's. For the first ten seconds, like you don't even see anything, and then finally you see a little tiny, tiny, little tiny trickle that comes down. And so yes, he goes to the back and probably went back there and Get cut himself again. ten more times. <laughs> Giant knife. <laughs> now he comes out and there's there's more blood. Yeah, he's, he's still with... not a crimson mask. Yeah. He has no heart. I see. There's no blood to be pumped. Yes. Yes. A flaw in their plan. He lost it all in that St. Valentine's Day massacre cage match. There was a lot of blood in that one. That's yes. true. Yeah. So Vince is in the ring and he's got a chair and he's going to hit Hunter with a chair and Rock's going to win and everyone's going to be happy. And then for no reason, Vince McMahon, who's the guy who brought Rock into this match, hits the Rock with a chair. Hunter makes a cover. The Rock kicks out. Vince hits Rock with a chair again. Hunter makes a cover. Hunter wins. Hunter is the first heel to leave WrestleMania as the world champion. It did not go over well. I had forgotten this negative, instant negative reaction. Yeah. People said, I, I came to WrestleMania to see The Rock win. Now you give me Hunter winning. Here is my garbage I am throwing into the ring. But hey. They had to send the fans home happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Rock comes back. Stephanie berates him, slaps him. He gives her the rock bottom. Place did cheer for that, but that was like the beginning of every couple of years, Stephanie has to take one bump at WrestleMania to make up for a year of berating and eviscerating every single person <laughs> yes. on the rocker yes. or on the roster. Yeah. Yeah, this sucked. This is a very, very bad match. This is a very, very bad main event. This was fucking terrible. If you, guys, if you guys are mad about WrestleMania 2019, sit through this fucking show and get back to me. Yes. WrestleMania 2019, I promise you, I promise will be better than this show. It can't be worse. There are 17 matches on the show. <laughs> like, the odds are, it's going to be better. There was one four-star match on this show... The second best match was... Two and a half? Actually, you know what? He gave the uh, the main event three, so that he thought was the second best match on the show. And the three-way, two and three-quarter, the third best match. Hmm. So there you go. If, if, if this year's WrestleMania with 17 matches can't exceed that, I'll eat my hat. You're actually wearing a hat, too. Yep. I won't eat it. <laughs> I won't need to. I'm going to be right. Got it. Yeah. So the next night... Monday Night Raw, number 358. Yeah, the Raw after WrestleMania, 2000 edition. April 3rd of the Not year very special. No. We open with a long promo segment. Shane is proud of his dad. He wants to beat up The Rock. He calls out The Rock. Stephen Hunter come out instead. At this point, they're talking about The Rock hitting Stephanie with the rock bottom in people's elbow. Oh, you thought her acting was bad the night before. <laughs> I wrote down. I wrote down her speech here. Did you? Okay, good. I do want to say... I got most of it. Before go before that, L- Lawler, the heel announcer saying, no woman should be treated like that. He's yes. Not, he's not wrong. Okay. So, Stephanie McMahon, professional... In 2000, in the year you 2000, were a heel announcer mm-hmm. to say no woman deserves to be yes. rock-bottomed. So, Stephanie says, Shane, I'll never forget or forgive what The Rock did to me last night. I mean, I'm a woman. I'm 135 pounds. I mean, yeah, I slapped The Rock, but he deserved it. And I certainly did not deserve The Rock bottom or The People's Elbow. I mean, my back, my neck, my chest is so sore. I feel like I've been in in a skiing accident. Yeah. Any normal wooden woman, wooden woman, 
wouldn't even be out here right now. And finally, somehow like, you were worse than she was. Thank you. I think that's a high compliment. <laughs> Which was difficult. Hunter can take no more. So he's starting to talk more, and he yanks the mic out of her hand to cut a promo. So he also wants a match with The Rock. Out comes Vince instead. Vince is a tense handshake with Hunter, who he was beating up the night before. He hugs Shane. Where's Vin- Linda? We never found out. Why didn't she come out here tonight? That's what we needed to to make this segment to to fulfill all of our wishes in this segment. What would she have talked about? Mick Foley getting retired again. Fuck if I know. Okay. So Vince also wants a one on one match with The Rock. He says he scrambled The Rock's brains at Mania by hitting him with a chair repeatedly. And then he turned to the Los Angeles fan base. And For began- three fucking minutes, he buried the L.A. fans. He just fucking went on and on and on and on and on. And I was like, dude, we're 18 minutes in this goddamn segment. Will you fucking get to the point? And you know what the worst part is? God damn it. I sat through this fucking promo. I sat through this goddamn promo and it just ended. There was no resolution. Three there, fucking... There was no Hold conclusion. on, there's more, Vinny. I'm going to lose it here. This was worse than Nitro. Too late. There's three fucking people that say they want to match with The Rock. Mm-hmm. Shane, Hunter, and Vince. Mm-hmm. We have a fucking 20-minute segment with them all brambling about who wants this fucking match. The goddamn segment ends. We They don't even decide who gets the fucking no. match. Okay, that takes place later in the show, which, by the way, I'm just going to cut to it right now. Vince meets with everyone later, okay? I don't want an hour in between. I don't want people to forget what happened like these assholes did. They go backstage, and there's Vince there, and Vince explains, we've done this before as a family, but Hunter, you're new. I'll explain it. You're going to pick a straw. He's got three straws in his hand. Mm -hmm. He goes, the short straw... Gets Triple H tonight. Hunter makes a crack about the the technological advancements of this family. And so, here's the deal, everybody. Which actually was clever, except it fucking made me mad because it was so fucking stupid. Sure. Hunter picks first, and he pulls his straw out that's like nine feet long. Yes. Okay? So, it's pretty clear he's not the short straw. Well, he saw it sticking out of the bottom of Vince's hand. So, he goes... Okay. Anyway... So it's down to Vince and Shane, all right? Just stick with me. So it's down to Vince and Shane, and Shane says, Dad, you go. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. Vince wait. is holding the straws, okay? Right, right. So Shane says, you go. Mm-hmm. Why did Shane say that? Hold on. I'm going to explain this to you. So Vince pulls the straw, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Shane's got the last straw, and Shane pulls it, and it's the short straw. Mm-hmm. Now, before we even get to anything further, okay, this fucking idiot Vince... Is wearing a black jacket and he has black straws. You know how hard it was to figure out what the fuck was going sure. on because of this moron? There, there's that. Okay. So they all draw straws. And then, as God is my fucking witness, after a 20 minute segment where all three guys wanted the rock, Shane gets the short straw and he's like, All right. All right. I can do this. And I'm like, Wait a second. Yeah. You begged for this goddamn fucking match. Am I wrong? No, that happened. Now you get the short straw, and you don't want the short straw. Uh-huh. So he leaves, okay? And Vince goes, I really wanted that match. Shane says, Hunter. Hunter says, I, I did too. Then Hunter goes, Why did that idiot <laughs> have the guy holding the straws? Draw the short draw the straw first. Because right. clearly Vince knew which straw was which. Yes, because the point is, Vinny, the, the point here at the end was after twenty fucking minutes of all three guys wanting the rock, when it came time to draw straws, none of them wanted the rock. That's also true. Because no, this is the point. Hunter went first because he saw how long the straw was. So he sure. deliberately pulled the long one, okay? Shane didn't want to face the rock. So he is like in his mind thinking... Like a 50-50 shot. No, in his mind he's thinking, Vince wants the rock. And he's holding the straws. So if uh, I let uh, him uh, go, uh, he'll see. deliberately okay. pull the short one. Okay. But Vince also doesn't want to face the rock. So he pulls the short straw, or the, the medium straw, and then Shane is stuck with the short... The point of this whole fucking rant is... 
They spent 20 minutes telling us, wasting our lives, yes. about which one of them demanded. Like, Shane comes out. He opened the show going, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to demand a match with The Rock. Then all these other guys come out wanting the match. And when it's finally time to choose, none of them want The Rock. What in the fuck is going on? What? What's going on here? Was I watching two different fucking shows? There's a bad TV show being produced, Brian. No, this was... This was... (laughs) Even WCW would not have done something this stupid. This was monstrously stupid. It did contradict itself. That is... (laughs) You don't... (laughs) And then, I hate to jump to the end of the show, but I'm gonna anyway. Okay? We have nothing left to review. I don't give a shit. (laughs) So, to recap, there's a 20-minute segment, All Three Guys Want the Rock. In the middle of the show, they all go to choose straws. None of them want The Rock. They come out for the fucking main event of Shane versus The Rock, and all three of them take turns beating on The Rock. Yes. And then Vince and Shane end up outside the ring. The Rock takes Triple H, who's not in the match. He hits him with a move, and he pins him. How the fuck is this not WCW? How? You know what this was? This was... WWE on an unopposed night. Yes, that's a key point too. Yes. You know what? We are going to do something as dumb or dumber than WCW, and we're going to fucking ruin them in the ratings, and we're going to laugh about it. That's my. That's the only explanation for this here. A deliberately bad show. They wanted to prove that we can do WCW worse than WCW and still win. Well, that's what happened. Since you brought up WCW, I had a question for you. On this clip show... I didn't watch it. I, okay, fine. But do you remember this? They had Tony Schiavone and Mark Madden in an empty arena. Had they actually booked WCW? Did they actually book the arena? Yes! And it just sat empty? Craig, let me explain how this works, okay? No, I'm... Hold on a second. No, listen. If you and I are going to run a show... Understood. ...in June... Okay. okay. We should have had that arena back in like, you know, November. Okay. Okay. So we have it booked for June. November comes, December comes. What's after that? January, February, March, <laughs> April. Traditionally, yes. The Explain point of this, this is you. let's say the show's booked for June 30th. All right? Yeah. Okay. So on June 16th, a bunch of crazy fuckers decide, oh, we're just going to stop everything. We're going to fire everybody and bring two shitheads back. Okay. okay? And then the two shitheads decide, oh, we're just not going to do a show next week. We'll start up in two weeks. You can't just say, can we have our money back for this arena? I, I understand. They so actually, yeah, they had a fucking empty arena. They must have had tickets sold. I, apparently they did. Unbelievable. And I guess you could use them for a different date. Or I guess maybe you could sit in the audience and watch Shivani <laughs> and Mark Madden talk about clips. Wow. Yeah. That's monumental. I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, that's that's the impression well, I got Well, you wrote the here. book, so I thought I'd ask you. Why? Well, I, I, I didn't even... Dude, if, if I'm going to write a book with every nuance of this, it'd be nine million pages. I mean, you can just go through all the, the... Anyway, point is, yes, I believe that that building, they just went in there and sat their asses down and did a show. Wow. So, like 15 minutes ago, you were talking about this Vince promo where he buries the LA fans. I just want to point out part of this. He was burying plastic surgery. Yeah. And the man who employs China mm-hmm. and Tori sure. and Trish Stratus right. and his own daughter, <laughs> Stephanie, your man, we heading down that road, he buried breast implants. Made me laugh. The Rock arrives at the building. Chris Jericho versus Eddie Guerrero with China on common, or at uh, ringside. Why was she there? Because she's out there. Eddie Guerrero's Mama Sita. Now. Eddie is now Latino Heat. No, she's there because she's been with Jericho. She's just in his corner. Okay. Yes. Eddie is now Latina, Latino Heat. He's calling China Mama Sita. Promises, promises to make his ancestors in Spain proud. The best part of this match is Eddie whips Jericho in and he goes to catch him in an abdominal stretch and it goes haywire. Yes. So he just says, fuck it, and grabs a sleeper instead. It's awesome. We have a random camera cut to the floor in Stephanie's locker room. Just a mistake. <laughs> so well, it did lead to something later, and the announcers acknowledged it. So I think, I think you were supposed to. I don't know. It was weird. So the ref gets bumped. Jericho has the pin, but there is no ref. China hits the ring, determines the ref is dead. She fast counts Eddie down and raises Jericho's hand. 
And Jericho thinks he has one. Mm -hmm. He's not that bright. And then China grabs Jericho. Vinny, did you watch this show? No one's that bright. No, he may as well have won. No. <laughs> what? True. There was another referee that counted the pin that happened to be a wrestler. On this show, that would be totally logical. <laughs> so China DDTs Jericho. She puts Eddie on top. The ref counts three. What a great European title reign this was for Chris Jericho. I'll say. Yeah. Hey, he won it. This leads to the best Eddie Guerrero. It's up there. It's my favorite. It's up there. So you know what's sad about Eddie? A lot. Besides, I mean his death, obviously. But sure. If you watched him here, if it were 2019, he was more than big enough here to be the top guy. Absolutely. Yes. And here he just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until he was dead. Yep. Sucks. Do you realize, Brian, you and I are five years older right now than Eddie Guerrero was when he died? Yes. I was blown away by that. Yes. I, he had to at least... Be, no, he's 38. Yes. Wow. He's he's bigger than the current SmackDown champion. Mm -hmm. And he's and bigger... And challenger. Not as tall, but he is, he is uh, bigger than probably the Universal champion coming up on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is true. So... Backstage, Stephanie is meeting with Vince. She begs him to try to, to let Triple H be the one who takes on The Rock. Yeah. She says, it's only right that my husband avenge what The Rock did to me. Vince says, what about me? She says, or he goes, what about me? What about your brother, Shane? See, he's big into the word brother. You know what I mean? It's like my brother, Owen. My mm -hmm. brother Shane, you gotta always throw in she brother. Has to clarify which it's brother. Very biblical here. This even though she only has one. Vince McMahon's writing. So she says, You've looked after me and protected me all my life, but it's not your job anymore. I love you. She kisses him right on the fucking lips, and you just hear everybody in LA just disgusted at what they've seen. It's a little creepy. It, it, it's only gonna escalate everyone. I know. Road Dog and X Pac versus TNA. In his pre-match promo... This was a pretty damn good match while last. This was a very fun TV tag match. For two minutes, This sure. was better than anything yeah, I saw in Mania. That. No, ladder match was better. <laughs> nah, I guess ladder match was better. Road Dog in his pre-match promo says that Trish Stratus has an ass like Rikishi. That's false. False. Well... A blatant lie. The, the point is, in the year 2000, that was an insult. In 2019, he would say that about some babyface woman. Have She's you totally seen different. both... I know what you're saying, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just like that video on, on, on Nitro, where they have all these girls in bikinis and there are no asses to be seen anywhere. I guarantee you. It's just the world has changed. I guarantee you, These Brian, Kardashians. If you showed 2019 wrestling fans that clip from Nitro of the skinny white girls in bikinis dancing on the beach and a clip of Rikishi dancing in his thong. Yes, I realize that this is... You're not going to get my point, Vinny. But go ahead. I don't think you're getting our point. Go ahead. Regardless. No, his point was she had a big ass. Forget the Rikishi part. I, she had muscular he glutes, used I understand. Rikishi. Yes. But he was trying to insult her, you know. My yes. Hurts. He was Move trying on. to insult her because her ass was too big, he thought. No. Just preposterous. Let's move on. So, yes, Brian, this is a very fun TV match. Tess Thank and you. Albert were awesome here. Big, athletic, I go to the to gym, move. Craig. I see what women do all the time. Go ahead, Vinny. Huh? Uh... Rob, you have something to add to this conversation. No, get out of here, Rob. You're in enough trouble the, with the ladies. Go ahead, Vinny. Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> wow. Dime him out here don't on the air. Know. Jeez. I'm just fucking with you, Rob. Can we get going here? I don't, I don't want to move on before anyone's... Uh... No. <laughs> anyway, so Tess and Albert... Are, I was they're, there they're... at Prime. Okay, now, thank you. All right, can we move on? Tess and Albert here, they look great. They're, they're a, a fresh new team. Uh, facing the very stale DX who on like the third incarnation and so of course the Road Dog hits Albert in the nuts x pockets next factor and Road Dog pins Albert great match it was a very fun <laughs> TV match yeah we got another one good one coming up sure Kurt Angle bitches to Howard Finkel about losing his belts Finkel is having none of it so Angle lays him out and puts him in a horrible cross face chicken wing yeah thank why god why did they... no one teach Kurt how to do this move well he stopped doing it after like a very short period of time I believe so yeah. he must have realized well he got sucked. rid of uh Ba Backlund's Backlund, gone. Backlund, right? Yeah, ba Backlund's yeah. gone. Apparently. I believe we've seen Backlund one time. I don't even think he was there at Mania, was he? No, he was there. No, they, they, there? they were talking about it at Mania. No, they, no, because what well, they said at Mania... Oh, that's right. Backlund is the one whose big mouth got Kurt in yes, situation. Yes, right. but he wasn't there. But so, and so Kurt has, I assume, on SmackDown, beat up Bob and he's gone. Mm. 
Shane goes to his dad, wants the match with The Rock. I, at this point, was certain they were just going to do a three-on-one handicap match, which in the end was close enough. Shane did not kiss his father in the lips. He did not. Thank you, Craig, yeah. for clarifying that. Chris Benoit versus Taz. This, this match. Awesome. So here's the story, everyone. <laughs> here's the story of the match. Chris Benoit is a machine with one speed. Right. And I don't know if Taz was unprepared or what the story was, but like Benoit just mutilated this guy. And he beat the shit out of him, and he was running rings around the guy, and he's throwing his ass all over the place, and he's suplexing him everywhere. He's just going at 80 miles an hour. And, like, this is no disrespect, or I'm not trying to denigrate Taz here, but he was not ready for this particular match, it appeared. He's just being flung all over the place. And then finally, Saturn runs down, and try Taz tries to give him a suplex and slips and nearly kills the guy. Oof. And then Benoit Germans this guy and pins him. Yeah, this match was awesome. Taz doing a superplex of Saturn was not a DQ. No. And Benoit just grabbed Taz and jerked him. This superplex, like, you are right in that, and on the one hand, Taz slipped, and thus that's why Saturn nearly died. But anyone else who tried the suplex and slipped, Saturn would have died. Only Taz could have saved a man after fucking up like this. Yes. No, dis- no disrespect to Taz, but he was so beneath Chris Benoit in this match. Well... Basically, everything Taz is good at, Benoit was also good at, and Benoit was better at a lot of other things, too. Right. Just that, unfortunately, how it went. So, Taz attacks afterwards, and these three men had the most half-assed brawl you ever saw. This was this was almost like a jobber match. Yeah. Rikishi's ass was on TV. It looked nothing like Trisha's. Get out of here! Thank you. Big Show tells Shane they are still friends, but he likes it here in Hollywood. He is going to cut loose... He's going to have some fun. He's mm-hmm. going to be a superstar. Yeah, I'll say. Edge and Christian come out for a promo. So last week or the week before, they were out here doing commentary, trying to be badasses, and it sucked. Here they were arrogant, arrogant prick geeks, and it was awesome. A thousand times better. Pretty than boy way. geeks. Pretty boy geeks. All the women are just screaming, and then Matt and Jeff are called out, and there's more screaming. And Christian, where says, are the screaming women nowadays? They're not there anymore. They vanished. Yeah. This is a missing audience in professional wrestling. I think it's I think it's the short haircuts. Edge called there's plenty of long hair. Not like WWE. Edge's. Edge has got a pretty mane. Edge calls them young bucks. Pick those chins up, young bucks. Yep. And it occurred to me, how old were Matt and Nick Jackson in two thousand? They were big fans, <laughs> but they didn't become the young bucks for like five more years. I mean, they could well, have yeah, just been it, watching this over and over on they tape. They could have risen this The seed down. could have been planted. It, Maybe I, been in this building I think for all the I know. seed was planted, actually. Yeah. yeah, this was L.A., yeah. yeah. So they make fun of these Hardys for being a second or third best. This brings out the Dudleys. Everyone has a giant brawl, and it gets separated. Eddie and China are flirting in Spanish backstage. Conveniently, there's a lowrider back there. <laughs> Step into the love machine, Eddie says. And they get in the lowrider, and they go away. China was giggling like a huge schoolgirl. <laughs> Probably the most fun she'd had in a long time. Big Show versus Rakishi Fatu. And yes, he's now Fatu. P-H-A-T-U. That'll get changed. Yes. So, Show's hair, he's been slicking it back for since he cut it, basically. Mm. He did not slick it back here. It's all poofy. Lovely, a huge Colt Cabana. <laughs> He did the worst worm I ever saw in my life in this match. Sure. He got Samoan dropped. Rikishi hits the acid lanch. He hits the stink face. He has a super kick. So he's absolutely destroying this giant. He's just tearing him apart and mauling him. And then Too Cool attacks the big show for the DQ. And Rikishi loses. Right. And he's so upset by this. That he dances with his friends. Well, they put the glasses on him. He can't help but dance once he puts the glasses on. What the hell was this? <laughs> now, I will say this. The crowd just wanted to see the dancing anyway. Mm-hmm. They were not disappointed. They got to see Rikishi dance. And Big Show from the ramp looked impressed. Impressed and sad. Longingly, he looked. He stared down that ramp. I'm not wrong. I guess not. It plays out later. It does. There's a close-up of the Rock dressing room door. We have our straw drawing segment. Anyone got anything else to add? Mm-mm. Okay. Big Show is back in the ring. Says there's more to him than being a monster. You saw me on Saturday Night Live. He says, you know, I'm a funny guy. There is more to me than headbutts and choke slams. Sometimes, he says, I feel like fighting. Sometimes 
I feel like dancing. Or I feel like relaxing, then I feel like dancing. I fucked up. I fucked up the Big Show's line. Let's talk about he fucked up dancing. He did fuck up dancing, too. I have (laughs) never in my life seen someone with this inability to dance. This had to be intentional. I mean, maybe. (laughs) But I mean, like, there's a thing called the beat. Not in Big Show's world. (laughs) He, he, (laughs) it's like... He was on another planet from this beat. I mean, even the very first thing where, like, the music starts and you go, he missed that by three full seconds. He did. It, it was so bad. But you know what? The fans loved it. The fans absolutely loved because it. Because it doesn't matter whether or not you can dance. The fans want to see wrestlers dancing. Res- wrestlers dancing always gets over. Yes. And you know what was so amazing about it was... The worst dancer I ever saw prior to this was Scotty Too Hotty. Sure. And he looked like a seasoned professional after I saw the Fred big Astaire show. Fred Astaire next to the big show. I was like, God damn, I was wrong. I am sorry, Scotty Too Hotty. You knew what you were doing. So the fans are saying, go big show, go big show, go big show. Then there is literally a record scratch and the music stops. Can you imagine if there had been a Dancing with the Stars back when this act was hot? <laughs> when, when the WWE If huge? they could have got like Rikishi on there. Can you fucking imagine? That would have been so much fun. It would have been incredible. Cole interviews The Rock, who just has like nothing to say. He just vows to become the Barry champion. Barry's limit man's promises to win the title. Yeehaw. Well, it's not time for fun, Vinny. It's not time for Ric Flair to talk about the women. What's, but what's, what's it's time a... for him to be mad. But he wasn't that mad. Yeah, he was You're just there. Not making jokes. Too cool is laughing at Big Show's terrible dancing, especially Grandmaster Sex A. In my notes here, I have described them as Tool Cool, which is a different team. Well, Crash Holly versus Hardcore Holly. So, at WrestleMania, there was a Hardcore Battle Royal where basically one person was it. Everyone else tried to beat him up. When he was pinned, that new guy was it, and they tried to beat him up. For 15 minutes. 15 minutes. As I recall, it was was actually kind of fun, but I'm not going to go back and watch it now. The point I bring up is, I forget exactly what happened, but the finish got fucked up. The wrong person won, and somebody got glass in their eye legit. So, Hardcore wins. He's not supposed to, but he wins on that show. So, it's Hardcore versus Crash here. And they're doing this match, and they break glass again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They break a picture over somebody's uh, uh, face the next day. The Acolytes come out. They attack Bob. They put Crash on top. Crash wins. And uh, clearly, Crash has paid off the Acolytes for their services. Crash is the Hardcore champion once again. That means she posse attacks him. They all can't work together. He escapes, and we're right back where we started. Okay, so didn't it wasn't there a deal where like the posse attacked Crash somewhere? I think it was like the airport. No, it was in the it was in the hotel room. The the first time where they're all breaking up each other's pins. First time it was in the hotel room. Okay, and then the second time they were working together at the airport, and now they can't work together again. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure I've got my timeline of stupidity right. Hunter goes to give Shane some advice for facing The Rock, but it realizes The Rock is way too fast and way too strong for Shane. He goes, I got some advice for you. If The Rock... He's much faster than you. (laughs) Okay, so if you see The Rock do this with his arm... Oh, he's much stronger than you. Just be careful out there. It was funny, (laughs) but it was like... Are they friends? Do they hate each other? What the fuck's going on here? Do you have a brother-in-law? Tony. How do you feel about him? He's a fine man. Okay. The big show goes to confront Grandmaster Sexy, and he calls him Brian. Uh Uh-oh. Was my dancing really that bad, he says? Yes. (laughs) Brian says... It was worse. Brian says, yes. And so the big show puts him through a table, steals his goggles and the hair extensions, and leaves. (laughs) Val Venus versus Kurt Angle. Kurt interrupts Val's promo to cut his own promo. He's outraged about losing both his titles last night. Now he has to wrestle, as he puts it, a film star. So he's going to wear protective rubber gloves. But as he goes to put them on, Val attacks, and they have another fun TV match. Kurt Angle is great. Val's very good. Finishes Val, goes up top. He misses the money shot, and Kurt wins with his horrible chicken wing. Hideous. Funniest part is, Val, of course, does not tap out. He, no. He waves his hands because yeah. Val Venus is a luchador. Yep, right. yep. He did the CMLL hand-waving. I wrote that down. Yes. 
Vince meets with Shane, promises to have Shane's back. Kane versus Bull Buchanan. What a waste of my fucking life. What a weird match. <laughs> Kane choke slams him and pins him. Did you miss Bull trying his springboard and falling on his ass? That was everybody. bad. Yeah, you know, that happens sometimes. Yep. Ropes are a little slick. I, I was surprised that... I was surprised they didn't just try it again. But Kane clearly said, it'll just get worse, kid. And he moved on. This <laughs> is what, the third week Bull Buchanan's been in the company? Second or third on the main roster. And he lost to Kane in seconds? Yes. Well, then Bossman and Bull handcuffed him and beat the hell out of him. Yeah, but still. And, he uh, no-sold Paul Bearer. Paul, Paul Bearer, yeah, yeah. Really? This is pointless. This yeah. Is pointless. Smashed a chair on Kane's hand, supposedly breaking it. Sure. Rock versus Shane McMahon. 19 years later, The Rock is not wrestling. Shane is. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Well. Well, it's because Rock went on to become the biggest movie star in the whole world. Well, there's that. Shane started a company in China and then came back. So it is, as noted, a blatant three-on-one. Hunter and Vince are both out there, and they'll one of them will take the raft. The other hit him with Rock on the floor. Shane will take the raft. They'll double-team Rock on the floor or whatever. Shane's awful. And on top of everything else... I didn't notice it until this match, but this ring was really squeaky. It's it's making lots of noises whenever they bounce. And, of course, Shane's in there doing his terrible boxing shuffle. You so know, this ring is... Dicky, dicky, dicky. I went on a 10-minute rant earlier about this whole storyline in this match mm-hmm. and how stupid the fucking finish was and all the booking leading up to it. I didn't even mention the thing that pissed me off the most until we actually got to the finish. And that is, it's supposed to be Shane versus The Rock. Yes. But Hunter and and Vince are going to interfere regularly. Right. Okay. So every time that one of them is going to interfere, the other one takes the ref. Right. They do this for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden after 10 minutes, Hunter gets in the ring and starts beating the shit out of the rock right in front of the referee. Vince and Shane are up the ramp. Who doesn't do a goddamn thing. Yeah. I'm like, seriously, did I start watching one show and then like another show merged in on my network or something? What in the fuck was, why could nothing be kept straight here? Hunter starts beating on the guy and then, yeah. He hits a rock bottom. He covers Hunter. He orders the ref to count three. And the ref does. And he celebrates with Hunter's belt. Yes. I'm going to read you the last part of my notes here. Hunter attacks from behind. This is not a DQ. The referee gets shoved down. Not a DQ. What is happening? Yes. Rock hits a rock bottom, orders ref to count three. What? What's happening? Yeah. Rock celebrates with the belt. I are confused. Hey, let me tell you something else. If I was a fan that flew from, let's say, Australia, I bought a ticket for WrestleMania, and maybe a ticket also for Raw the next night. Forget that if I was just a fan watching on television. But it'd be worse if I actually flew from across the globe to this show and i saw that goddamn wrestlemania main event that goes 40 minutes and hunter wins in the end and then the next night on raw in a nothing happening bullshit match rock pins triple h in the middle of the ring i'd be so fucking mad i'd be furious that's what they did this era was bad (laughs) this is like the glory era a lot of it was yeah it gets better i think oh yeah but I sure we hope keep, so. Craig, we keep saying, oh, yeah, but I'm still waiting. Like, we do have the radicals. Yeah, this That's an improvement. This is the year, though. <laughs> yes. Obviously In not theory. April. <laughs> In theory. WWF Monday Night Raw, number 359, April 10th of the year 2000. Now, camera work has fallen to horrible depths here in 2019 but i couldn't help but notice that this show opened with about eight shots exactly the same we'll do a wide shot of the crowd and zoom in on one side wide shot of the crowd zoom in on one side wide shot over and over and over again rock comes out for a promo on smackdown oh, i'm going a little faster because granny's taking up some time here on smackdown he beat up vince and him with a chair and he calls out vince tonight vince comes out rock wants a title shot they're in miami he wants a title shot tonight Vince instead says, I will give you a cage match against a mystery opponent, and if you win, you will get a title shot. Actually, he didn't, Vinny. What he said was, mm-hmm. there's going to be a cage match tonight, and Rock, if you escape over the top or win via pinfall or submission, you'll be victorious. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. That is not wrong. Because I was actually thinking, is this for a championship match? Because I don't know what that means. If you win... 
you'll be victorious. <laughs> you're correct. I'm, I'm going over my notes here, and you're exactly right. Yeah, and his brain got rattled on SmackDown. It did. So this was a little concerning. Yeah. And it's still, it's even more concerning in 2019. So he did finally, after several weeks, explain why he turned on the Rock at WrestleMania. And the answer is because he could have made Rock a goof, such as Doink or Gobbledygooker or the Bastion Booger. And instead, he made him a star and the world champion, and Rock never even said thank you. Hmm. Wow. That's, that's I mean, it. knowing Rock's character, I'm sure that's true. I'm sure it is, actually. It, I, there's been, there have been shittier explanations for heel turns. So, he goes on for a long, long... I can't fucking believe you watched all of this. Long time. At 18 minutes, I gave up. <laughs> and I skipped forward to when Triple H, Shane, is, I don't know how much I skipped... Felt like another hour. So you missed the part where Vince questioned Rock's fix- fixation with the rectal cavity? Uh, well, I did hear a part where he kept saying feces. Feces. Right. Yeah. Like he, like he only learned this word right before he came That's out. That's literally where I gave up. And <laughs> I just moved on. I'm like, I can't take this anymore. Didn't learn how to pronounce it the right way, so he just said the wrong way five times. And eventually the other other mans came out and Rock hit Vince with a chair and it went to 20 minutes. X-Pac and Road Dog versus Edge and Christian. That all could have been accomplished in a quarter of the time. <laughs> oh, much less. Easily. <laughs> I want a title match. You get one if you ca- win a cage match tonight. Okay. Who's it against? I'm not going to tell you. That's okay. Ten seconds. What if I win? You'll be victorious. All right. <laughs> Done. That's it. X-Pac and Road Dog versus Edge and Christian. Goes three minutes when uh, there's a belt shot and X-Pac pins Christian and they're the new champs. But wait. Earl Hebner. Now, he watched as the challengers hit the champions with a foreign object and tried to win. Yes. And the punishment for the challengers is the match gets restarted and they can still win the titles. Right. They didn't get DQ'd. No. They restarted the match. It's, it's still a net benefit for them because they didn't hit a guy with a weapon. Right. So this they, was dumb. It was dumb. And uh, they, they still won. Edge and Christian did. Edge pinned Pac with a spear. So no, no harm, no foul on this terrible, terrible decision. But that's how it went. You do realize that there were fuck finishes up and down the show. Oh, oh I, yeah. I, you realize I'm the guy who tracks the finishes for the finish. Earl Hebner, apparently he did it once and then realized what a shitty thing he had just done and just said, ah, fuck it. Hmm. I'm not doing this again. He, he quit quickly. Godfather was backstage hanging out with his women. Terry confronts the cat. Yes. Oh. Says, I know we've had our differences, but after we were in the spotlight of WrestleMania, our phones have been blowing up. We're getting all kinds of offers for movies and TV, and I just want to apologize, and I want to treat you to a day of beauty. What kind of movies offers were these? I I could guess. I don't know. The Scorpion King. Oh, sure. I bet if we looked up, Terry actually did make some direct-to-DVD movies, probably. Cat, like an absolute idiot. Yes. Fell for this. Not just an idiot. Cat's exact response is, Cat is backstage reading a WWF magazine with herself in the cover, and when offered a day of beauty, she replies, I'm not doing anything. Why did you fly out here? Well, she got flown in. And they said, we don't have anything for you? No, it so, happens all the fucking time, it does. All right, you're right. But the point of this is, you're like, exactly right. I don't remember anything about this. I had no idea where it was going. I still knew that she was an idiot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you know, I just gotta say one thing about my failure in the match with Orange Cassidy when is I was distracted by music mm-hmm. and I was pinned. Okay. As I noted on the Brian and Vinny show, whatever day that was where we covered that match, I was the fucking heel. Do you understand? Okay. Oh, I do. It's okay. my job to look like a fucking idiot. My my issue is when the baby face looks like a fucking idiot. Right. I'm pretty sure Kat's the baby face here. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't Terry. I mean, Cat had a little dog. So, she was clearly the baby face here. Think about that. And Troy Wilson was a heel with a little dog. Well, I guess so. But anyway, we'll get to the dog. So, Cat is just an idiot. Cat is dumb. Yes, yes she's can... a dumb baby face. Here we can agree. Yes. Kurt Angle versus The Godfather. Kurt is a promo preaching. The Godfather's about... got a new song. Yeah, the Ice T song. Okay, now I got to ask a question about Kurt. He comes out and he preaches abstinence. The joy of celibacy. Unlike the people here, he says, I do so voluntarily. Yes. Right. Kurt's delivery is so great. Yes. Yeah. He's so sincere. Yes. Is he? So he says, I have got a poem. And this is his poem. <laughs> you can prance and you can dance. But when it comes to relations, keep it in your pants. That's right. What the fuck is this from? What, did someone do a song? 
that they used this clip for the beginning of it, like way back in the day here on the site. You, you remember this promo? I remember this vividly. And like, there's no reason that I would have gone back 50 times. I mean, it took one time to recap it. Like, I don't know why I would have to go over it again. This was used somewhere for something many times. Hmm. I have no recollection. This okay. is like a motto of your mother's or anything? No, this exact young, thing. Young I, I, I remember when he said it. Like, when he said it, I remembered his exact delivery. I see. Like, this clip was used for something. Somebody help me out. Was it? I feel like it was a song on our site somewhere. I'm pretty sure it wasn't on Schoolhouse Rock. Was it part of his Hall of Fame induction, perhaps? No, it was a clip. All I know is he also used the word debauchery. Yes. And then repeated it just to make sure we all knew he was doing it wrong. And then he pulled a condom out a pro- of his pocket. A prophylactic. An so- unwrapped, unrolled prophylactic. Yes. <laughs> like Godfather hasn't been using these. Then he mentioned debauchery. Yeah. He sure did. Yeah, he... <laughs> Debauchery. Thanks for thanks for paying attention, Brian. Debauchery. Did Orange Cassidy rattle your brain? I wasn't listening to you. I was texting for someone to come up and kill this cat. I see. So they do Cats this- are heels to me now. <laughs> That's why he's pointing over that dog. They do this match. The highlight of the match was Kurt having to pretend he could not outrun the Godfather. <laughs> and uh, one of the Godfather's women slapped Kurt. The crowd loved it, but he came back and he won clean with an angle slam. Mm-hmm. You can prance <laughs> and you can dance. But when it comes to relations, keep it in your pants. And get to this work is going to drive me fucking crazy till somebody tells me what this was used for. Get to work on those songs, kids. It was a song. On, I'm sure it was a song on the side. I just can't remember. We, we must have played it a million times. Earlier today, Kat and Terry get into a limo and leave. And at the exact same time, in an amazing coincidence, Eddie Guerrero and China arrive in their load rider. Mm-hmm. Late. Well, that no, was earlier today. They may have been. I on see. Time, okay, yeah. you're right. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Rikishi promises to back that ass up, and then delivers. Yeah, he actually. Who was he talking to? Uh, Taz the and was Scotty. It, but which guy? Like he turned to one of them and he goes, "Taz, you want me to back that ass up?" It was Scotty. I was it, like, "What?" I think this is important because he would never say this to Taz. <laughs> he would no. never say this to anybody. And Taz never said yes. You want me to back this ass up? Well, I don't. No. Okay, so no one would ever say that to anybody. <laughs> you have a point. Thank you. Big Show is very excited to show Shane McMahon something. Shane can't believe what he's seeing, and we'll just have to wait and see how this pays off. I guess some people might say that to other people, but... Sure. It's none of our business. Just not these three. No, In this room, yes. No, not me and you, and I'm talking Rikishi. <laughs> Can we move on? I would love to. Let's talk about this great Triple H Takemichinoku match. You're skipping a whole thing. Holy crap. Oh, sorry. You're skipping like five things. <laughs> well, two things. <coughs> Trio's match, Rikishi, Scotty Tuati, and Taz. Oh, yeah. Benoit, Saturn, and Malenko. Congrats to the Radicals for getting matching gear this week, including Eddie, who wasn't even on TV with the rest of Oh, them. you matching gear geeks. That's why we have people like the Forgotten Sons, because they dress the same. <laughs> yes, Brian, you're exactly right. Chris Benoit and Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko are exactly like the Forgotten Well, they're songs. not. My point is that like sometimes you don't need to wear matching gear. You know what I mean? Like th- these guys could be a team without matching gear. It's okay. So this match is short. But it this was fun. really bothers some people. This match is short, but it was fun. People really love Rikishi's comeback. Like if you have forgotten, people remember Rikishi as the dancing fat guy, and he was, but he was also a main event caliber killer. He was a good wrestler. They, yes. but, but he was over is the important thing. They could have, they absolutely could have done Triple H versus Rikishi for the title as a pay per view main event. They did it two weeks ago. As a pay per view main event. Okay. It would work. So they're doing this trios match. As I wrote here, a bunch of shit happens. Somebody's out of position. Somebody gets called a stupid ass, and the radicals win. Mm-hmm. See, even, even Lance himself does not like the team of Ricochet and Aleister Black. No matter how good they are, no matter how great a match they might have, their gear doesn't match, so he can't take them seriously as a team. I think this is madness. A team's a team. You can get matching gear if you want to. Matching flannel. It's not the end of the world if you don't. All right. But see, if you're the Forgotten Sons, Mm -hmm. don't get... If you... Here's the thing. If without the gear you match, don't add matching gear. Okay? (laughs) Okay? How about that? So the Uso should not have matching gear. Well, I mean, that's their identical twins. Nothing can be done. They're actually not identical. But I mean, they're not? I know. I was stunned too. Really? I was fl- blown away, but they How are not identical that? twins. <laughs> How about that? But my point is, like, if you've got Otis and Tucker, sure, put them in matching gear. Okay. It's clear which one's You can w- tell Otis from Tucker. Yes. But, like, if you're the Forgotten Sons, 
Do not put them in matching gear. That's actually a fair point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vinny. Cutler and... Is it Murphy? No, it's Blake. Cutler and Blake. They're too much alike. Yes. Because Murphy's on 205 Buddy Murphy's on 205 Live. Yes, but he used to team with Blake. Yes. And they also got confused for looking like each other. Yes. Terry takes Kat to a hair salon and then prepares a drink for her with a special ingredient. Yeah, she spikes her drink. She slept her Mickey. That's that's not right. No, do not do this, everyone. Do not do this. Triple H versus a mystery opponent for the title. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. So... Hunter comes out, he's ready to defend his title against whoever comes up, and Kai and Tai appears on the screen, and Hunter is laughing, and then Kai and Tai is accompanied by the APA, and Hunter is pissed, and I am so confused now, because Hunter's, it's either Hunter's brother-in-law, or wife, or father-in-law, who's in charge of the show at this point, or Hunter himself, so somebody booked him in this mystery opponent match, somebody had to know who the mystery opponent was, who was trying to screw with Hunter? Okay, here's what I got out of it. They handpicked a, an opponent for him, somebody very small, Takamichi Noku. But he didn't know that, did right. he? I think so. And it doesn't matter any one of them, either of them. Okay. okay. So they try to one up him by going and hiring the APA Kyan to protect. Yes, to protect Taka from the rest of the McMahons. Okay. Okay. okay, so they thought Hunter would beat up the small man, sure. and the small man outsmarted them by paying for friends. Right. Got it. All right, that makes some sense. I wish they had told me that. Oh, they didn't tell me. I figured it out. I did not. So it's Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Taka Michinoku. And APA chases Shane to the back. Hunter's back knee is out of control in this segment. <laughs> that being said, a phenomenal heel. Just a great heel. Sells his ass off early, bumping all over the place. Eventually cuts Taka off. He's a great bully. He's intimidating the ref. He's manhandling uh, 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 Taka. He's a, just a, a great bad guy. Caught on camera telling the ref he doesn't give a fuck what he says. Mm-hmm. And then we get... Then things just get, well, Hunter in the early 2000s. Because you see, Hunter is not enough that he has to fight one man or that man's partner. But he also has to fight the APA at the same time. Right. The ref gets distracted. Funaki kicks Hunter into the APA. The APA beat up Hunter. Funaki is a dropkick. Taka hits a moonsault. Jerry Lawler, heel announcer, asks, and I quote, how many guys does Hunter have to take on? So Hunter is fighting off four men. Bossman and Bull Buchanan attack the APA. Vince and Shane are out there. And finally, Hunter overcomes the odds. Yes. Yes. And survives unthinkable uh, circumstances. Hits a pedigree and wins clean. There's one point at this match. Taka hit a tornado DDT, and these fans thought that Taka Michinoku was going to win the world. It title. was a hell of a match. Yeah, because Hunter did a great job with the guy. Because Hunter's awesome, and Taka's awesome. Yes. And- well, the point is, like, Hunter has had a lot of matches lately that have been boring. In 2019 or 20... In, well, 2019, too, but... Yes, okay. In, in 2000, he had, he had a bunch of matches that were somewhat boring. Okay. And then, lo and behold, he goes in there with Taka fu- fucking Michinoku... Nobody thinks has any chance of winning. Has not been on TV. And he convinces them that the man could win. That's true. And has a good match with the guy. Absolutely yeah. true. So, yeah. But all I can think of watching this is... He should have shorter matches more often. Maybe, well, that I mm-hmm. probably do, but I was thinking more... If, if Roman Reigns had been booked this way, he would never would have been booed. Not one time. On SmackDown, Bubba Ray threatens to put Trish through a table. But she did, uh, failed. And then Trish orders TNA to attack the Dudleys in their locker room here on Raw. So we get TNA versus the Hardys. So Test and Albert had a death gimmick. They were a much better team than I remember. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess they were around for a long time in various doing various things, but they should have just been a team for years and years and years. Hardys win here with a twist of fate in the senton. How ironic! Two weeks after the team got together, TNA. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm more talking about the Hardys won here, and they also won the tag titles tonight on SmackDown. It's sure amazing, did. isn't it? Can you imagine watching Jeff Hardy in this match? 19 years later, still going. He's, he's still a top guy. He's the world tag team champions, yes. and and he still does spots. So does these same moves, most of them. He he's not broken down. He's not ish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he slowed down a step, but not yeah. like some of these guys. So. So, TNA loses. The Dudleys attack TNA. During the beating, TNA's music starts playing. That was funny. They set up a table, but Trish distracts Bubba. 
Albert chokes Lance Bubba through a table, and TNA and Trish walk out. Because you can prance, and you can dance. But when it comes to relations, Bubba, keep it in your pants. Please, actually. He did yeah. He did get a creepy look on his face. If he had only Trish. listened to Kurt's advice, this yeah. never would have happened to him. But if, if, you're, if you're going to, if you must have an angle where women go through tables, at least build to it. You know, okay. sure. They, did, they could have done it in one shot here, but no. You have to buy the pay per view to see the Dudleys beat TNA and put Trish, Trish through a table. Spoiler alert. Jeez. I assume. I actually don't know. Big Show versus Val Venus. Oh, this. Okay, so, so <laughs> if you're the Big Show, right, and you're fat, and they start putting you in storylines, pointing out how fat you are, right. Do you not take this as, like, a message? I I might skip the buffet, yeah. I mean, fuck, he's so fat out there. He comes out doing a fat Val Venus impression. He's got this wig on, he looks like a gigantic Jimmy Garvin. That's exactly what I thought. He does. (laughs) He was a giant Jimmy Garvin, except Garvin was a much better talker. And he... (laughs) And leaner. He compares himself to the Titanic, the biggest fucking boat ever, that sunk. Mm -hmm. Val points out how stupid he is and says he has a dimply fat ass. That's a quote. And show gets sad, <laughs> and he, he looked so sad that everybody booed Val Venus, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Giants have feelings, too. That's right. So they're doing this match, and Big Show, I guess, was supposed to choke Val with his towel, but he couldn't find the towel. Where's the damn towel, he shouts. He finds his wig. He chokes Val out with a wig for the DQ. It was awesome. Val, first spot, Val slams his head into the turnbuckle, and his wig flies up way high in the air, and it just parachutes back down gently to the <laughs> I think it was Law who says his hair fell off. Eddie Guerrero versus Chris Jericho. For some reason I wrote crowd boos. They should have booed louder. Wow. I must have really disliked that segment. <laughs> wow. Wasn't that bad? It was, a, a, it was a dumb roughly segment, but what are you going to do? Eddie Guerrero versus Chris Jericho. They actually made, mass produced, and expected to sell, expected to sell t-shirts that read the China. Yeah. VA dash China. Who would buy that? Did you see what was on the other side? No. Of the uh, some, China? Something about going inside, I believe. Yes. Yes. I, 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 what? I, yeah. Enter at your own risk. Yeah. The China. Yeah. What? Yeah. A hot seller, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Oh, my. Only to be outdone, they zoomed in on a sign in the crowd. It said Latino Heat, H E E T. Yeah. Jericho goes a promo. He's back to calling China a man, saying she has a bigger package than Eddie. Match is fun while it lasted. China distracts Jericho. It's funny because they have this pretty good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They get about six minutes. Sure. China runs in, gives a combat girl low blow in a DDT, <laughs> throws Eddie on top, and the and ref... was the combat girl combo. The ref counts the pin, and it's funny because they left WCW... For this. He did. Yes. I mean, quite frankly, they're in the exact same spot, getting the exact same amount of time, with the exact same bullshit finishes. You're not wrong. Now, granted, they were much better off coming here. Yeah. But it is funny Um, that they left to do the exact same thing, (laughs) but at least they get heat for it now. Exactly, yes. The crowd reacts to them. I will say this. It looks like Eddie Guerrero is having a ball right now. Sure he is. Uh, Yes. uh, but But you're right. Physically, they're doing the exact same stuff. That is true. That is true. And booking wise, yeah, yeah, they're in the middle of the card. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, but the middle of the card is taken more seriously here. That's that's true. Yeah, there's there's hope for them here. Yes, yes, yes. There, there was there, not hope for them in the other place when they were it, doing these exact. They same are things. definitely in the middle of the card here, but the middle of the card is not treated like it, it, the middle of the card is still something important. Yes, it's still an important part of the show. So there's a tug of war with a belt. The ref goes down, and yeah, we get the nut shot in DDT, and Eddie wins. Back of the salon, the cat wakes up from her nap. You'll never guess what happened. So they wrote tramp on her forehead and lipstick and put all sorts of horrible makeup on her, and they gave her a short haircut. Okay, so... And they dyed it green. Yeah. She she's she wakes up, her hair's all fucked up, she's got paint on her or whatever, and mm. she's freaking out, and she's screaming, she's going crazy. And I don't know if it was, it was China or the hairstylist, but one of them just says, We need your dog, too! And the dog's been shaved from the neck down. Yes. It's like a little lion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I laughed so hard at that throwaway bullshit line. 
they had to shave the dog as well. Yes. It wasn't enough. All this stuff that they did to the cat, they were like, look at that fucking dog. <laughs> Get the damn shears. They turned that little dog into a lion. I wonder if they drugged the dog, too. I doubt it. I, no, probably not, no. I just laughed because they're so evil. <laughs> they're so diabolical. They cut her hair to mid-length. Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, her. do you remember when she was out there as China's mini me? Yes. Her hair was already short. Right. Yes. So she put on a wig to cut to her normal haircut. I see. Yes. Yeah. Now, why didn't the evil, the, the the evil stylist ever make it into wrestling? Why didn't they bring him in as a, a character? He could feud with Beefcake. Sure. Yeah. The Rock versus the mystery opponent in a steel cage, and it turns out it is mystery opponents. Because The Rock, who is being set up to challenge for the world championship at the next pay-per-view, is thrown against his wishes into a surprise handicap match. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time I saw this, it was a fast lane, when Kofi Kingston was thrown into a surprise handicap match against Cesaro and Sheamus. Right. And as I recall, Cesaro and Sheamus beat the fuck out of him. Yes, they did. And laid him lying like a corpse. So I I was so certain here that the boss man of Bill Buchanan would brutalize the rock like a piece of meat and leave him laying out cold. Mm-hmm. And then a funny thing happened. The rock fought back, he overcame the odds, and he beat them. Yes. Wacky. Crazy. Why do they do it so backwards, Brian? I, Why do they do it wrong? I loved when Bull Buchanan goes for like an axe handle and the rock catches him and gives him a rock bottom and wins. Yep. And Jim Ross cannot believe that the rock has won. He's fighting against all odds. I thought it's bull fucking Buchanan. Last week, he lost to Kane in a squash. So even 19 years ago, they were booking by the seat of their pants. Well, that's true. Why in the fuck, if you were going to do Big Boss Man versus Bull Buchanan in The Rock, and you wanted Boss Man and Bull Buchanan to be like an actual perceived threat to The Rock, Mm. would you have Kane squash fucking Bull Buchanan the week before? Kane! That's a good question. Well, that's what they did. Yeah. So The Rock wins, but then he's immediately jumped by Hunter and the rest of the Whipmans, and Hunter hits him with brass knucks, and Rock pulls out a razor blade and <laughs> slices the top half of his head off. Well, you know, he hit a gusher. There's actually a point where, and the, the, the camera's too close up to be sure, but it, it almost looks like somebody hit him as he was gigging, which yeah. would explain a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I say blood is pouring out of this man, there's a shot at the end. For, there's a shot where Hunter is going to pedigree him on a chair, and it's too zoomed out to actually see the blood pour, but you can watch the puddle form mm-hmm. on the chair as they're standing there. And then uh, they, they beat him and beat him and beat him, and eventually the APA chases them away. But Rock sits up. It's like five minutes into this, and Rock sits up, and the blood like spurts out of his head. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. It wasn't quite mass transit, but it was bad. Part of me actually thought he may have gigged a second time was bleeding so much. But no, it was just the first one was that bad. So, yeah, that was Raw. Had some fun stuff and, and had a point. It, it had, was it was all right. It was no okay case. I show. wouldn't call it a bad show by no. any means. No. It wasn't better a great Nitro. show. It was much better than Nitro. I mean, it was The Rock versus the big boss man in the main event. And Bull Buchanan. That's what I said, didn't I? No. The Rock and the big boss man and the bull. Yeah. Bull Buchanan. Yes. <laughs> the main event. It was. I can't believe I forgot Bull fucking Buchanan was <laughs> Well, he did get pinned. Bull Buchanan did get pinned. Yes. Okay. Let's do this fucking thing. Let's do it. Where am I here? Oh, here we go. The finishes on this show were pin after a reversed decision, clean pin, pin after a double team in a trios match, clean pin despite outside interference from three men, Clean pin. DQ for choking with wig. Pin after outside interference. And clean pin in a handicap cage match. DQ for choking with wig. That's a new one, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) That is a new one. Well, it's going to be DQ for choking with towel. Towel. Yeah. (laughs) Which is sillier, I don't know. (laughs) WWF Monday Night Raw number 360. What a goddamn show. Also April 17th of the year 2000. In the opener... Chris Jericho versus Triple H. Yeah. For the title. As it turns out for the title, because Steph is backstage. He's reminding Hunter of what Jericho said on SmackDown, which they did not show, but then Jericho was kind enough to repeat himself. This is already a better recap than that thing that opened Nitro. 
So Jericho repeats all his everything terrible thing he said about Stephanie, a brutal, bottom feeding, disgusting trash bag hoe. The, 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 his, it became his catchphrase for her for like the next decade. So Hunter comes out and he's all pissed off. But Jericho takes advantage of this rage by daring Hunter to put the title on the line to show his Steph what a real man he was, what a great husband he was. And Hunter accepts. So Jericho at this point shows that he has hired the Acolytes for the evening. And they come out to watch Jericho's back. So the match begins. Hunter at this point is massive, but this dude could still move. And they had a great wrestling match. It's fantastic. You know what it was? It was Triple H for a long time being Ric Flair. He sold and he sold and he sold and he sold and he sold. And finally he would get something and immediately give it right back. He would sell and he would sell and he would sell. Did the big knee drop out of the corner just like Flair. He'd give something and then he'd just take it right back. Yep. He just sold forever here. Yes. So Jericho gets his lip busted, which makes the whole thing better. And Hunter goes up top, but he stops to flirt with Steph, and Jericho pulls him off with a big arm drag, makes his comeback, goes for the walls of Jericho. Everyone in this building jumps to their feet. Everyone's just losing their mind. There's a ref bump. Shane interferes, but the acolytes chase him away. Stephanie throws the belt into the ring, nowhere near Hunter. And Jericho hits the belt shot, but there is no ref. Earl Hebner runs out. He counts the pin, but Hunter kicks out. Thanks, thanks to the thanks to the delay, we are then told that Earl Hebner is on probation. Hunter oh, Steffer! I didn't know that. Mad at him. So Hunter is mad at Earl. He pushes Earl, pushes him down, but then turns around and Jericho hits a spin kick, and Jericho hits a quebrada, and Earl does a fast count, and Chris Jericho is your new world champion. Thank God this ref knew how to do a fast count. Well, the one. That's a good point. <laughs> the Thank one God good it wasn't biased fucking ref Nick Patrick in there in the history of the world. That fucking idiot would have done a normal count or a slow count, it ruined the entire thing. So all I could think of this place goes just white hot ballistic glee and passion and energy. It's insane to watch, and I'm watching this thinking Chris Jericho was in World Championship Wrestling nine months ago. And look what they have done with him at this exact second. At <laughs> this exact right? second. This very brief moment in time, he was a giant star. Like, he was right here, right at the, 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 the blink of an eye, the biggest star in the company. And I'd say that without exaggeration. This match was awesome. Mm-hmm. Incredible TV moment. I feel like I should save my rant about all of this for the very end of the show. But I, I, I almost can't help myself here. I understand. <laughs> If they would have just gone with this, okay? <laughs> what in the fuck? Here's the thing. As awesome as this TV moment was, as a legendary moment, mm-hmm. one of the great moments on Raw history, as as great as it was, it at the end of the day, it was bullshit. It was complete bullshit. Because there's a bunch of things here. As we will learn... In the coming weeks, this whole thing had zero to do with Chris Jericho. Yes. Oh, we learned that by the end of the show. Well, yeah, but I mean, this was all about Hunter and Earl. Earl was the main event. Okay. And this Hunter-Earl storyline is going to continue over the next several weeks. Oh, great. Leading to the next pay-per-view. Oh, I can't wait. No, when you know that, it's even more ridiculous. This was all about Hunter and Earl and Jericho just happened to be the person that was put in the spot right here. Yeah. If they would have just gone with Jericho, they would have fucking had something. Clearly. But instead, instead, because they had an idea with Hunter and Earl, <laughs> they did this fucking storyline. <laughs> the more you say it, the more absurd it gets. And, and we'll get into what they do next in a moment here. But when this was over, it was like, this didn't do... Jack shit ultimately for Chris Jericho. No. It's amazing. This, and here's the other thing. Not only did it do jack shit for Chris Jericho, but the pay-per-view main event is The Rock versus Triple H. Yeah. the, the Triple H won the main event of WrestleMania, a four-way to retain the title. The first heel ever to retain the title at WrestleMania. In hindsight... Why did you beat Triple H two weeks before he's facing the Rocket Backlash? 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like the whole the whole idea is you're going to crown the rock. <laughs> Instead, they took they, they took heat off Jericho, yes. which they'd given him. They mm-hmm. gave him heat and then they took it all away. Mm-hmm. They took heat off The Rock getting his big win over Triple H because we just saw Triple H get beaten right here. Mm -hmm. They took steam off Triple H. Yes. Like, I watched this show and it's like, it, it it was a great moment that was like the biggest load of bullshit for like everybody involved. Yes. What in the fuck? By the end of this very program, for all the reasons you've already explained, everyone, everyone came off looking worse than they did when the show started. Yes. If they would have just not done this, <laughs> or no, all they had to do was not do anything, <laughs> they had just just Listen. not done anything, or fuck it, Jericho's the champion. You know what I'm saying? The next WrestleMania isn't for 11 months. No. <laughs> Jericho can be the goddamn champion until SummerSlam. Hunter can beat him at SummerSlam, and then you build up to whatever you're going to do next year at WrestleMania. Steve Austin, can Rock, whatever you're going to do for King next... King of the Ring, you have six months to kill. Who gives a shit? But man, I, I, I watched this back, and the match was awesome. Okay? Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It's a fucking great awesome match. Awesome fucking great television moment. And then they fucking ruined everything immediately from that point forward. Chris Jericho was never more over than he was at this point. And I, th- this was his high, p- high point. This is the high point of his career. And they threw it away 100, and, uh, 100 minutes later, whatever it is. Ten! <laughs> that's, that's actually true. Well, it's, it's worse by the end of the show. Yes. So Hunter and Shane, after the break, are shouting at all the refs. Hunter grabs Earl and drags him back to the ring. Now, I will say this. When I said 10 minutes ago that Jericho was the biggest star in the company for that blink of an eye, at this point, as... Earl is manhandling, or excuse me, Hunter is manhandling Earl. The crowd is chaining for Rocky, not Jericho. So the, the, the moment had passed. But they were still into him. So Hunter shows video of the fast count. He has Mike Kyoto, who is the referee who started the match and got bumped. He has him watch this video, confirm it was a fast count. And Mike says, it's true. That was a fast count. You screwed Triple H, Earl. <laughs> you Hun- fucking heel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it's important everyone know Hunter's for the invulnerable. He lost the title to Chris Jericho because a crooked ref screwed him the heel. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll get into what happens at the end of the show here in a moment. So Hunter dismisses Kyoto. He starts to bully and harass Earl, demands he, re- he reverse the decision and throw out the match. It never happened. Nobody here saw anything. Earl says no, and everyone cheers. Then Earl forgets his line for a long time. They all stand there looking at each other. Finally, the camera goes behind Hunter so that we don't see Hunter telling Earl what his line is. Earl has a condition. He will reverse... Forgetfulness. The, he, will, <laughs> he will reverse the decision as long as Hunter promises that nobody touches him for the rest of his life. Oh, God. So, now the now the babyface referee's a fucking moron. Well, now Hunter... He didn't see what was coming immediately. Hunter, I sure did. After giving him his line, Hunt, Earl fucked it up, and Hunter has to correct him. And Hunter says, let me get this straight. We can never hurt you as long as you're an official. So Earl says yes. Hunter agrees. Earl reverses the decision. Hunter sends Earl to get the belt from that sawed-off midget Chris Jericho. Oh, can you imagine... Jericho comes out. He's wearing the belt. He's the goddamn world champion. And he is pissed off and defiant. And he says something about how Stephanie has slept with half the boys in the locker room. And everyone goes, ooh. And then Chris Jericho removes his belt and gives it to Earl Hebner and goes away. Yep. What? 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 Yep. <laughs> that's, what you... they, that's what they did. This was worse than Vince Russo walking through Chronic on Nitro. Hunter... Or uh, Jericho saying, okay, and surrendering his belt and going away. So Earl goes back to the ring. He puts the belt on Hunter. And Hunter, you'll never guess what happens, everybody. I I can't guess. Don't tell me he fired him. Earl's in the riot squad. No. Hunter fires Earl and beats him up. I can't believe it. Now, the fans... Because he's no longer a WWE official. That's amazing. It's It's a loophole that no one could have possibly seen coming. Fans were chanting for Rocky because he's a huge star. The fans went hog wild for Chris Jericho, who we know is there and is watching. We just saw him a minute ago. Outrun a bunch of refs to make the save. 
Yeah. At this point, and we're not even to the end of the show yet, at this point, Chris Jericho is worse off than he was when the show started. Eddie Guerrero is backstage studying for his degree. GD. By his, yes, to clarify, his GED. Because Eddie Guerrero in storyline is a high school dropout. He really bad wants his GED. I'll credit this for, this for him. He wanted to improve himself. Yes. But China says, not now, you have a match. The Grills of Destiny are G-O-D. They should have a team, G-E-D. They're dumb. <laughs> Think about that idea. <laughs> dumb, you say. <laughs> Linda arrives. She is greeted by the Stooges. I'm not saying the people that have GEDs are dumb. It's just, you know. The Hardys <laughs> graduated high school. Yet. The Hardys versus Danny only made eighth grade. The Hardys She's versus not dumb. <laughs> the Hardys versus S. A. I could go on and on. People like keep don't. keep trying to pry that foot out of your mouth. Okay. The Hardys versus S. A. Rios and Eddie Guerrero. You fucker. For the first time, the Hardys and Lita are on screen at the same time. Yeah. Oh my god. So <laughs> it's Eddie. With his Latino Heat music and Esa Rios against the Hardys. Yes. But Lita is with Esa Rios. Yeah. Okay. So I'm watching this, and first off, this is what happened, everybody. I'm not making this up, okay? I never graduated high school, by the way. Just want to throw that in there. So Jeff goes up top for the senton, and China responds by grabbing his balls. Fact. Squeezing as hard as she can. On his balls. Tossing him by the balls. Yanking him by the balls. Onto the top rope where he's crotch. Oh, he lands on his balls. Why didn't he retire? <laughs> that was the most devastating maneuver I've ever seen in the history of wrestling. <laughs> so then Lita goes up top, and she goes for a moonsault, and she hits Eddie. And then they explain to us that it was an accident. Yes. And she was aiming for Matt, and then Matt starts beating the shit out of Lita, and I was like... What the fuck's going on? I was my I was just totally GED'd, befuddled by the fact I was just surreal. Yes, if you could, because you assume Lita be out there with Matt, she is not. It was an accident. This all made sense, and Matt throws her out of the ring, hits a twist of fate, and pins Eddie. Yes, you know now, I made it to the tenth grade. I decided I'd seen enough, and I got out. Okay, yeah, just want to throw that in there. So, all silliness aside. This is a hell of a tag team. It was match. really good. Eddie Guerrero, for those of you who don't recall or missed his era, unbelievably great. If I recall correctly, at this time, he's about to be fired for... Well, he had some issues. Yes, but goddamn, he could wrestle. Jesus. When he... There's a point here where he took a tilt-a-whirl slam from, I think, Jeff, and if you watch it closely, he is honestly wrestling himself. You he, know how many people can wrestle this good sober? <laughs> like <laughs> none. You. It's incredible. It is, it's astonishing. He was amazing. So China is pissed about all this, and she power bombs S.A. Rios. Shane, That's the end of that guy. I think it is, actually. Dude. Jericho got off lucky on this show. <laughs> Shane greets Linda. Now, I don't know what's going on. They were enemies as of WrestleMania. Now they are loving mother and son. Not really. No. Yeah. They're friendly, at least. He just wants to know what's going on, and she's not telling him. She says he is. she is there to make an important announcement about The Rock. I am there to make an important announcement about The Rock. And he presses her for more info, but she refuses. She talks the way I talk when I'm trying to do, you know, my thing on the watch. Dictate a text to your wa- yeah. Apple Watch? Yeah. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> now, now basically copies the same thing. Of course Like, she we'll be sitting in the car, and she'll go, we are comma on the way. <laughs> she doesn't know what a comma is. But she tries to recap what I was saying into my watch. That's fantastic. Hunter is upset about The Rock. He wants to know why Linda's there. Order Shane to go press her for more information. Taz is now the ECW World Heavyweight Champion. Yes. He, Mike Awesome, as the reigning champion, debuted on Nitro. That weekend, Taz crashed an ECW affair as, a, as, as an unannounced surprise, beat Mike Awesome in two minutes with a chokehold. And as I, as I recall the story, Awesome was in a car the whole afternoon, got out of the car, went to the ring, did the job, walked into the car and walked away and drove away. Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> Just to make sure no one fucked with him. So Taz is the ECW champion here on Raw. Uh, Crash Holly's the hardcore champion. This is a three-way for the hardcore title. So they're, they're having, as noted, a three-way for the hardcore title. When out walks Bob Holly with another ref and starts fighting Crash Holly for the hardcore title. Because it's 24-7 rule. There are now two matches, two different hardcore matches going on at the same time. Yes. I hope this works into your finishes report. 
Th- uh, nobody cares about it, either match, as it turns out. There is glass involved. It breaks early, and so Crash picks up a tray and hits Saturn with it and pins him, and this ends both matches. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> you don't say. Shane harasses Linda. She blows him off. Okay, I got to talk about this next segment. All right. Okay, as much as I loved the opener, in some ways, this was the best segment on the show. Lin- with Linda McMahon, by the way. Before that, Kurt is at Penn State preaching abstinence to students. Yes. Okay, now Linda. Linda comes out and she says, I am here to address a situation that feels to me to be a little unfair. At Backlash, The Rock is scheduled and will challenge Triple H for the WWE title. But from what I can see, the deck is already stacked against him. Vince will be in Triple H's corner and Steph will certainly be there. You're actually doing a great job because you're giving her 1% more life than she had last week, which means it's the second most robotic promo of all time. Yes. So, therefore, I think The Rock is outnumbered. Rock has not asked for my help or anyone else's. But after watching tonight and what happened at WrestleMania, I am putting someone in his corner to even the odds. As soon as she said that, I thought, if it's fucking... Can you imagine if it was Stone Cold Steve Austin? That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who it was. I was like, can you imagine if it's Stone... That's fucking giant news. She goes, no, it is not Mick Foley. It is none other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Everyone goes, holy fuck! They all just go crazy. They fucking lost their shit. Yeah. For Steve Austin coming back, making his bigger turn after being run over, and being in the Rock's corner. So everybody is losing their fucking mind. Stephanie storms down to the ring. Hunter's behind her. He's busy putting water in his fucking hair. <laughs> they storm down to the ring. And she goes, Linda, Mom, you've got to change your mind. Linda goes, no. Steph says, well, I won't change my mind about what I have to do. But just remember, like you told me when I was a little girl, this is going to hurt me a lot more than it hurts you. She's only slightly less robotic than Linda. She's also terrible. So she goes to slap Linda McMahon. And Linda McMahon does the fucking karate rising block (laughs) and then slaps (laughs) Stephanie who takes a bump. The fucking place, if they had not announced that Steve Austin was coming back, this would have been the biggest pop on Raw in the year 2000. They fucking went nuts when she slapped Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie takes a bump. It's fucking Pandalarium now. The place is going crazy. They're jumping up and down like crazy. Linda is horrified. With Linda is, puts her hands on her face. Oh my God, I can't... Oh my God, I cannot believe I hit my little girl. She's freaked out. And then Hunter grabs Linda. Steph orders Hunter to grab Linda. And he goes to give her a fucking pedigree. Yeah. <laughs> Shane is like, that's my fucking mom. He leaps over and he clotheslines Triple H. Clearly takes his giant bump. Like people are, they're literally like Gene said, they're hanging from the fucking rafters. They're going crazy. Shane and Hunter start screaming at each other. Steph's getting in between them. They're shoving her out of the way. They're trying to hit each other. And then my favorite part, the Rock comes out on the ramp. They hit his music. And The Rock comes out on the ramp, and he is absolutely, perfectly calm. <laughs> yeah. He is wearing his sunglasses, yeah. and he just calmly walks out there, and he looks at the crowd like, what the fuck's going on? What's going on over there? As calm as can be. He cuts a promo at Austin being in his corner. He says... Austin and I haven't always been on the same page, but there's one thing we can both agree on, and that is that Triple H is the biggest asshole walking God's green earth. The fans hear the word asshole. Now they've lost it. They're jumping up and down and going crazy. This segment was fucking incredible. It was incredible. My only complaint is, like, five minutes later, these shithead heels are all back together buddies again. Well, yeah. What? I don't know. <laughs> Wait a second. <sighs> Hunter tried to pedigree Stephanie's fucking mother. Yeah. Shane attacked Hunter. Yeah. Stephanie got between them. They were both shoving her and trying to fight their way through her. And five minutes later, they're just back fucking together again? Well, I guess they realize that they agree that Rock is the biggest asshole walking God's green earth. They, they have a common enemy still. I was so mad at the bullshit non-follow-up to this incredible fucking segment. God damn it. 
The Lugs Boot of the Week is TNA doing a bunch of moves to the Dudleys. Top rope elbow, neck hanging, tree bomb. All sorts of fun. And yes, Hunter is on camera again. Yeah. It's Michael Coley goes, Hunter, what are your thoughts on what just transpired? I'm like, I've been watching his thoughts for an hour and 15 fucking minutes. He's fucking mad. Like, what the fuck else do you want the goddamn fucking guy to say? Jesus, Cole. And what does is, what is Hunter say? I'm fucking mad. He's mad. Nobody beats me. And we're going to face Jericho in the Acolytes tonight. I actually wrote down that he's... That, I, I wrote down that Jericho had already been written out out of the storyline entirely, but then Hunter named dropped him at the end, which turned out to be a negative in the long run. He should have just disappeared. Dudleys versus Hedgies. Match went two minutes. The Dudleys hit a 3D. Test is a top rope elbow. The referee sees Test putting Al Snow on top, and he counts the pin anyway. This sucked. Bubba grabs Trish. I believe for the first time tells Devon to get the tables. But then Trish kisses Bubba to escape, and it works, and she flees. That's what happened. Kurt finds a couple of Penn State making out. He gives them a <laughs> God, sucker. did he ever. He walks into catering. There's a girl on a guy's lap, and their tongues are down each other's throats. I'm like, what the fuck kind of a catering place is this? This is ridiculous. That is a that is an inappropriate PDA. That was they crossed the line. That was a very public display. I was behind here. Kurt here. Scotty Too Hotty versus Dean Malenko. Excellent match. Nobody cares about anything except the worm. It was very was very good. And Dean gets the cloverleaf, but Scotty gets the ropes. So Dean tries a superplex, but upon impact, Scotty hooks, hooks the uh, leg cradle and gets the win. Scotty Too Hotty is the light heavyweight champion. Yes. Okay. But this is the Dynamite Kid finish. Who yes. did this? It okay. was Randy Savage, Dynamite Kid. Yes. So Scotty's the light heavyweight champion. He celebrates by almost doing a spin rooney he did the spin. He does not get the Rooney. Mm, hate that. Kurt is continuing his spiel at Penn State when the Big Show arrives, passing out condoms to the youngsters. Yeah. He, they cut the show show. He's throwing out condoms to everyone, and they pan him back to an outraged Kurt Angle, and show right, recites a poem, which you couldn't quite hear because he's off camera and the mic's focused on, on Kurt. I believe Big Show said... Wrap the hide, ride the pie. Huh. I think that is what the big show <laughs> that said. That would lose here. on the granny show. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's a horrible poem. It really is. It really is. If any of you can decipher what he said and correct me, I may be wrong. But I listened to it like four times. Yeah, you should have done is turn on the closed captioning. I bet me I should have. Maybe it was on there. Chris Benoit versus the big show. Okay. So first off, big show has more new music. He's had as many themes as turns at this point. Comes out here to face Chris Benoit, and it's the fat big show that's soon to be sent to Ohio Valley Wrestling. And I'm like, fuck, Chris Benoit is brushing the big show. I was wrong. <laughs> they had a great match. Benoit beat the shit out of Big Show. Big Show got fired up and beat the shit out of Chris Benoit. The only negative was the crowd was dead. But I mean, they worked their asses off. And then Show went for the choke slam, and the finish is Chris Benoit kicked him in the balls for the DQ. That was the best they could fucking come up with. I guess so. Especially since Angle came out and attacked Show anyway. So, yes. In in his entire career, nobody did a better job of making the big show look like a big, scary, giant monster than Chris Benoit. He had that one fantastic choke slam he took on Nitro. Here, when Big Show does a throwing press slam. He presses Benoit over his head and throws him high in the air and Benoit just takes this perfect bump down onto his belly. They go out of the ring and show presses, throws Benoit over the top rope into the ring again. But then, at the same time, when Benoit cuts him off, he's so damn aggressive and so good, it's believable that he's beating up the giant. Benoit was very good at his job. And then they did a shit finish. He punted Big Show in the nuts and Angle ran out. He also attacked Big Show's nuts. Edge and Christian versus the big boss man and Bull Buchanan. Has anyone pointed out that Roman Reigns stole his gear from Bull Buchanan? Do we see that already? I mean, the whole shield, but... I guess so, yeah. So, <laughs> the boss man, the highlight of this match is when the boss man makes a cover and Teddy is out of position and he's late to count and he finally drops down and counts one, two, and there's a kick out and boss man looks at Teddy and says, Count, dick! <laughs> And then the boss man just shoves the ref, and it's a disqualification. When he shoved the ref down for the DQ, and Lawler screamed, What? 
I was like, I know, Jerry. I, I'm feeling the same thing you are right now. And I watched this fucking show before Nitro. <laughs> yes. If that would have happened after I watched Nitro, I'd have been done at this point. Kane returns. They hit his hand with a chair last week. He chokes Lamus Bowl. Boss Man escapes. Michael Cole interviews Jericho and the Acolytes. I did laugh at this. Michael Cole is interviewing them. And uh, to be fair, he actually asked a good question for once. He goes, Chris Jericho, have you considered that perhaps Triple H might have paid off the Acolytes tonight? Yeah. The Acolytes are fucking outraged. But they say, you know, we would have taken the money. But we'd have been man enough to tell Chris Jericho. Yeah. Then they bury Cole and call him a little bitch. <laughs> That's what happened. They took Jericho's money tonight, so they will stand by him tonight. See, listen, everybody. This is what I want out of a backstage interviewer. That is a perfectly logical question. Yeah. Right? Yes, it is. How the acolytes we... are, they will they will take anyone's money. Mm -hmm. How does Chris Jericho not know that Triple H paid off the acolytes to turn on Chris Jericho? Excellent fucking question. Not like earlier when he had to go up to Triple H and say, how do you feel about this situation? That's a goddamn stupid question. He's been ranting about it for an hour and a half. Edge and Christian are walking backstage and get attacked by DX. Or they have my other favorite question on Raw nowadays. Do you think you can beat so-and-so? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Do I think I can beat him? What the fuck kind of a stupid question Why is that? I flown across the country into this building? Jesus if I God Almighty. To... Jericho and the Acolytes versus DX. Do you think you can beat Marco Stunt? Let me fucking think about this. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Chris Jericho and the Acolytes versus DX. So having this giant six-way brawl. When Edge and Christian run out, they brawl with DX, and DX and the Acolytes and Edge and Christian all go to the back. There's these Hunter and Jericho in the ring. Which, by the way, apparently the rule is, if you attack somebody far enough up the ramp, <laughs> it's, it's not, a, not DQ. a DQ. There's like a line, like in Sleepy Hollow. Like, if you brawl past this line, like, you're just out of the match. You know what I mean? Yes. But if you're closer than that line, it's a disqualification. Yes. Or the referees are all nearsighted. So, Boss Man and Bull Buchanan come out for some reason. The Acolytes attack them. I don't know what's going on. And then, of all the finishes to do... Can I explain this finish? Because I rewound it. <laughs> just because, to make sure... Because, you... no, I saw the very end. Oh, I see. But then I thought, what led up to this? Yeah. I'll just tell you the way I saw it. So, all this shit's going on. I'm trying to recap it. All right? And all of a sudden, I look up, and Hunter has hooked Chris Jericho for the pedigree. He pedigrees him, he covers him, and he pins him in the middle of the ring. Yeah. I thought, what led up to this? There must have been a weapon shot. Or sure. An interference, maybe. So I rewound it, and what happened was, Boss Man and Bull Buchanan attacked the Acolytes, Chris Jericho was in the ring, and he was pounding on Triple H in the corner. He was kicking him, and he was punching him, and he was chopping him. He went to whip him across the ring. Hunter did a reversal. Jericho hit the corner, and as he stumbled out, Triple H kicked him in the gut and pedigreed him and pinned him clean as a fucking sheet in the middle of the ring. I was like, of course he did. Do you remember like 40 minutes ago when I talked about Chris Jericho being for a blink of an eye, the biggest star in the company? They then spent the next hour and a half doing everything they could to ensure Chris Jericho was not a star at all. You know what's amazing about it was? A lot. Let's think about the finish of the first match, okay? Jericho hits his lion salt. Hunter essentially kicked out, but the referee counted so fast that it was a pin. Mm -hmm. So Jericho didn't even really beat the guy. He did not. Okay. So then Hunter quizzes the referee, the unbiased referee, who in fact admits, you screwed Triple H, Earl. Hunter didn't really get pinned. So then they have to for sure prove to us that he did not lose to Chris Jericho by making sure in a goddamn six-man tag at the end of the show he couldn't beat Brad Shaw. No, no, no. no he no. couldn't beat Farouk. Oh, come on now. No, no, no. 
He had to beat Chris Jericho and not even with a low blow. <laughs> no. Or interference from Stephanie. He didn't rake the Or audience. you know what? Play off the first match, hit him with the belt. No. He pinned him clean in the middle of the ring because he was so insecure that he thought that you might think that Chris Jericho is better than he is because he beat him in a fake match with a referee delivering a fast count in a decision that was reversed. Can you fucking imagine the level of insecurity? It's astonishing. It, the, 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 the... It's mind-blowing. <laughs> Part of me actually feels bad for him, to be honest. <laughs> well, don't now. <laughs> Everything turned out all right. He got over it. Yes. But Jesus, God fucking almighty. Like, Holy God. They could not have done more to assure you, the viewer at home, don't worry, viewers, Chris Jericho is not a star. No, he's still a mid card, everybody. Yes. Don't worry. There's no. You, he's you, not being elevated. No. We he, promise. No, you don't need to go buy his merchandise to cheer for him anymore. He's still merely a sawed-off little midget Chris Jericho. I was aghast when this show was over. I was furious we everyone remembers the opener match of course they, they, they remember the moments and they remember the moment where they take the belt off jericho i don't think anyone remembers the end of this i, honest I to god, didn't honest to god i didn't even remember when he had to give the belt back i only remember the match and him winning and i knew he had it he didn't have it by the end of the show yes that's my only memory of it watching it back now it's mind blowing yes. this show it's crazy he may as well have stayed in wcw listen <laughs> listen you don't want Chris Jericho to be the champion, okay? You want to keep the chair, the belt on Hunter so he can drop it to The Rock. Fine. Like, you had the opportunity on this show to make Chris Jericho. Whether he's a champion or not, you have a chance on this show after the reaction he got for winning the belt, you could have very easily changed the main event finish. You could have Jericho beat Triple H. Actually, you couldn't because they're doing the Rock match. But you could have Jericho beat anybody on that other team. Mm -hmm. Give Jericho that big win. Send the fans home happy. This fucking guy got screwed. He got screwed tonight, but one of these days, he's going to be back for that title. Make a star! Try. Nope. Try. They fucked the whole thing up. He Monumentally. They could have had Hunter escape, but man, he tapped out the road dog. Nope. Nope. Got to pin him. Got to pin him. So, a, a final postscript on this before you start the music. Chris Jericho, on I, I believe one of the very first episodes of his podcast, had Triple H as his guest. <laughs> and they talked about this show. And Jericho was talking about how badly the fans in that building wanted him to win and be the world champion. And Hunter says, and this is a quote, Yeah, but at the time, my attitude was, screw Jericho. <laughs> well, he did. He <laughs> Mission did. accomplished. Yes. So, there you go. Hopefully he's a changed man now. Let's go to the music. The finishes on this show were Fast Count Pinfall that was later reversed Pin after botched interference Pin that somehow ends two hardcore matches at once Pin after blatant interference Clean Pin DQ to the nut shot DQ to the referee attack and then clean pin of a sawed-off little midget to make sure he doesn't get close to the main events again for a long, 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 long time. What a night of action thing. WWF Monday Night Raw number 361, April 24th of the year 2000. Kurt Ang Angle comes out for a promo to open the show. Yes. He, I guess I guess this counts as making him a main eventer now. He's a, the show opening promo. He explains that he is setting aside his quest for championship gold to focus on the big show, who is a big ass. He does not appreciate big asses, which brings us to his opponent, Rikishi. Welcome to 1999. No appreciation of big asses. There really wasn't. It's all changed 19 years later. When, when did Baby Got Back come out? It was older than that, wasn't it? Years before that. Yeah, but that was, yeah, like, yeah. A, that was like a comedy song at the time. Not really. Yeah. I like big butts. And I cannot Designed lie. to be laughed at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it's serious business. Anyway... Angle and Rikishi. Kurt Angle versus Rikishi. It's, it's fun for a minute, and then Angle just throws the ref into Rikishi for the DQ. Uh, the Big Show attacks. Angle gets a stink face. Show gives Rikishi his glasses. Rikishi dances. You know how many times I wrote in this report here, nothing match. Yeah. Nothing match. This was a show full of nothing matches. Nothing match. At least the main event was main not event. a nothing match. Yeah. Uh, the, oh. Craig, we got I was just going to say, when Angle takes a stink face, he really gets up in there. He, he does. He's a pro. He really is. I'm sure 
in the thousands of wrestling matches Kurt Angle had, he smelled every part of everyone's body at some that's point. Very, so they, That's a good point. Just used to it. Uh, it announces, by the way, during this match, uh, acknowledge x a family loss, a loss in his family, which is why he was not on the show. Speaking of which, the DX Express arrives. Hunter and Shane get off. Was I the only one that expected a huge cinder block to fall on top of the DX Express? I know it's much later, but... I've actually forgotten what happened. I have no Express. idea what you're talking about. You've got to be kidding me. No. No. Rob's lost all respect he had for us. <laughs> and it wasn't much to begin with. No, no. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll right. find out when the angle happens. He's, he's known us. I don't blame him. So, Trish is in her underwear. Let's 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 backtrack. The DX Express arrives. You want to talk about that? They're playing their own theme <laughs> as yes. they travel town to town. Doesn't yes, everybody? Absolutely are. You don't yeah. go blasting California love. It's one thing go. to like have your own theme music on your ringtone <laughs> because like you know how many people call you during the day. They're Literally. traveling town to town and playing their theme song on a loop. On a loop. Okay. <laughs> hours and hours. Fucking creepy. And they get off the bus and Hunter and Shane are all buddy buddy. Mm-hmm. After getting in a fucking fight on TV last week. Right. I was infuriated. They, they did ex- get to it later. They got to it later, but I was pissed off when I saw these guys show up together. You're pissed off about it last week, so I'm sure you're even more pissed off. Now. Yes. Can I talk about Trish in her underwear now? <laughs> well, she was in her underwear doing table porn. So, okay. they did like a half dozen of these, it felt like, throughout the show. It's Trish in various forms of lingerie, I guess. Mm-hmm. Various outfits. And someone had to write a half dozen promos filled with innuendos about how Trish was turned on by tables. Right. Yeah. I could not have done this. I couldn't write this many pro- uh, 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 sexual promos about tables. These people exist, Vinny. I guess so. Very creative. I, I, was, I was watching Trish in her underwear roll around in this table. Like, I think, imagine if a non-wrestling fan walked in right now. Right. And had to explain to them why this woman was so turned on and aroused by this furniture. Well, Jim Ross said she was taunting Bubba. I see. And Lawler thinks she's smitten with Bubba. Now, did she get new enhancements, or is this just a really... No, she's always, are you kidding me? always been like you that. You kidding me? No. Since, I, I believe since her very first camera shot with the company. I see. That's, yeah, that's what she said. Uh, Shane, Hunter, and Steph come out for a promo. They promise Vince McMahon is coming, so everyone stay tuned. Back then, everyone stayed tuned. They did, actually, yes. I, yeah, I was not... Even today. I'm sure they do. Well, they didn't have an hour three. <laughs> so, Shane, to your point, Brian, he apologizes to Hunter... And bluntly, matter-of-factly says, I'm sorry that I hit you in the face. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> says, I've never had a brother. I know that you would never try to pedigree my mother. You're the greatest brother-in-law a guy could ever have. Hmm. And I love you. And they hug. Yeah. That's what they came up with. They got in a goddamn fight. And they got out of it by Shane just deciding he wasn't really going to pedigree Linda. When he had her arms behind her back and her head between his knees, and he was, he was in the middle of leaping, he was when bluffing. I cut him off. Yeah. So Stephanie, in a greatly irritating, obnoxious manner, whines about the names the fans chant at her. She drove me nuts here. Hunter rants about fairness for a while. He's about to say something about Jericho when Jericho interrupts. Jericho wants a rematch. Instead, Shane challenges Jericho and Rock to a tag match against him and Hunter. Hunter agrees. He denies Jericho his title match, calls Jericho short, and so Jericho steals the belt and lays Hunter out with it. Hey, I gotta say, look to me here like they, they realized last week, shit, this fucking guy's over. Maybe. Let's do something with this guy. He certainly was not because buried on the show. Because they did not bury him here on this show, except for Hunter not being able to help himself, calling him short. Yeah, well, they didn't bury him. No. Hunter Yes. Very him. Uh, during the... Oh, at first, Eddie in China. Eddie got his GED, and now is getting ready for prom. I was unaware that <laughs> so, you get to go to prom after you finish your in GED. your 30s. I'll have to finish my GED so that I can go to prom. Please do. Yes. Uh, and report back. So... It's going to take a while. <laughs> during the break, Benoit attacks Jericho, leaves him out backstage. Because Benoit and Jericho... Are fighting for the Intercontinental title on Sunday. Yeah. So it's one of these things about this whole thing that just made me mad. All the stuff they did last week and then all the stuff they're doing this week, all it's doing is muddying everything up. Well, yes. It's supposed to be Triple H versus The Rock, mm-hmm. where someone's finally going to beat Hunter. 
And I guess Jericho is supposed to be challenging for the Intercontinental title. But because of what they did last week, Hunter's been beaten. We saw it. Rock fucking vanished until like three quarters of the way through this show. He had one promo last week. We never even saw him. He's fighting for the title next week. Like, Rock just dropped off the face of the earth. They're pushing Jericho, but then they changed their mind about it in the middle of a fucking show yesterday or last week, and they undo everything. Now they're redoing it again, but that's not even the match. It's just... It's like watching the show now. <laughs> Harsh words. Like, what the fuck is a match supposed to be? What match am I supposed to care about right now? Right now, as a viewer watching the show, I care about Jericho and Hunter. Which is not the match But that's getting. not the match. Yeah. It's The Rock and Hunter. And then Benoit's just out there having great matches, but apparently I'm supposed to care about his match with Jericho. Yeah, this is a go-home show for Backlash. Yeah, that, that's a key point. We haven't mentioned that yet. This is the go-home show. And they're not doing it very well. No. Road Dog versus Benoit. Road Dog in his promo mentions, if you ain't down with Dennis Knight, I got two words for you. Did, Pig Farmer. Did Midian get fire, fired this week? I don't know. I assume. I think so. Edge and Christian come out on commentary. They are facing Road Dog in the next pocket of the pay-per-view. And they are doing the new gimmick where they're shooting. Mm -hmm. Dropping insider lingo. They hit the announce desk and say, we're going to interfere and cost him the match. In wrestling circles, they explain, that's called a run-in. We're going to cause the Road Dog to lose. They also note that Jim Ross is a mark for Edge and Christian. He definitely was not fired. He's around the rest of the year. We're going to get naked Midian here in oh, a while. Oh, that's right. Oh, good. I don't know what inspired Road Dog to shout out. You know, it is nice of Edge and Christian to explain the lingo because they don't do that on Nitro at all. No, they just throw it out there. I mean, right. I, and I was thinking, yeah, they do that. The Nitros we're watching now, they just throw everything out there and expect everyone to know. Yep. And a month or two ago, Lane and Idol were dropping insider lingo. Right. But they are not Edge and Christian, so it was not entertaining. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it's a great improvement here. So Tori comes out, and even though, like, on camera, in storyline, the plan was that Edge and Christian would get involved in Tori and go to the finish, somehow everything still got screwed up and went wonky. But somehow, Edge hit a spear, Bamba hit a headbutt, and Road Dog got pinned. Lawler explained, they smartened us up to the fact they're going to do a run-in. <laughs> and they beat up Road Dog some more, and Tori tries to save, and Christian DDTs her. Because I guess in in 2000, a woman must get beat up on every show. Sure. Angle meets with the APA. This was funny. He wants to pay them to beat people up. Hey, they made a very good point. We're the Acolyte Protection Agency. Yes, That's right. We don't beat people up. We protect people. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, in WWE involves a lot of beating people up. <laughs> That's a very... So, so Kurt should have come in and what he should have said was, can you protect me from the big show? Right. By beating him up. Well, I mean, if Big Show comes after him, then there there's provocation. I suppose so. I'm not just going to go after them. But yes, you're They're correct. Honorable Brian. in in this in this uh, in this world, it is a very gray area between protecting people and beating somebody up. So they're about to 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 take his offer, and then he begins to lecture them about cutting down on drinking and smoking and the women and get some nicer furniture and, they, and swearing and no cursing, and they get mad at him to kick him out. He also made sure to call out Bradshaw's hand that he had at the time. And uh, Bradshaw was very upset and threw a beer. Oh, the poker hand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He he he, he complimented him on his. I believe it was three queens. Right. Yeah. Boss man and Bull Buchanan are hanging out talking to Stephanie. Okay, this segment was awesome. Yes, it was because Boss man and Bull are in there. They're talking to Steph about God only knows what uh, the conversation those three would have discussing. <laughs> so Kurt Angle storms in and he's mad, mm -hmm. and Stephanie says, "Oh, Kurt, why are you so upset?" And he explains the APA kicked him out because he wanted them to help beat up the big show. And suddenly he stops and says, wait a second, boss man, you don't like the big show. And the boss man gleefully exclaims or explains mm -hmm. both how he took the big show's daddy's coffin and drove it all over the land. And literally Kurt Angle turned into granny mm -hmm. because... <laughs> As the boss man is gleefully explaining this crazy thing that he does, uh, Kurt Angle just looks at him for a second and goes, So anyway, <laughs> could you help me beat up the big show? Yeah. And Stephanie says, Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to make sure that we get that match signed. Boss man and Bull Buchanan versus the big show in a handicap match. And Kurt says, Thank you, Stephanie. 
and she melts into a puddle. You've never seen a woman so smitten in her in her shoes. She's she, she smitten Kurt, with this guy because we know this has been infatuated with Kurt since he showed up. Right. Yes, but this is the first time they've been on camera together, and when he not only acknowledged her but thanked her for the favor she had done for him, she's now she knows she's on his good side, and she's done. She's done for. I'd I'd forgotten that they were doing this storyline, and they just brought it back here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's fine. That's great. They don't, they don't actually pay it off. Fuck no, they don't. But enjoy it while they build it. <laughs> the build is so awesome. At least you can learn how to build a feud. Yes. <laughs> don't pay attention to the payoff. It was a long, long term, and then they had one kiss, and that was it. Spoilers, dude. Oh, come on, Craig. Was it Kurt Cute or Cute Kurt? Cute Kurt. That's right. No, it was Kurt Cute. Was it? I think yes, so. it was backwards. Like, they, they, they do battle rap. They're, they're, they're just, they always do this shit. What? Yes. Battle rap. Yes, that's what they call it. It's, when you're gonna, it should be a rap battle. Well, they call it a rap battle. Oh, I'm, so anyway, I'm moving on. Hollies versus Hardys. It goes two minutes. Crash hits Jeff with a trash can lid, and Bob hits a drop kick and pins Jeff Hardy. Yes, mm-hmm. powerful drop kick. A nothing match. However, Crash is still the hardcore champion, so the Hardys jump him. To be fair, at WrestleMania, he announced there was no longer a 24 7 rule. No. Oh, it came back. They forgot it. And oh, okay. So this continuity editor isn't the best. He's still dealing with Vince. Mm. So yeah, the Hardys attack and Saturn and Taz and Hardcore are out there fighting. And Jeff is a senton, but Matt Hardy steals the win. So Matt Hardy, your new Hardcore champion, you may update your record books. China likes her dress for the prom, but she does not like Eddie's jacket. Isn't it funny how Eddie Guerrero for years was just Eddie Guerrero, and he's been in WWF now for like three months, and he's Cheech. Yep. <laughs> it's an astonishing exactly. transformation. Well, he had to get hurt for that to happen. Excuse me? He had to get hurt for that to I happen. guess so. I guess we... Must have been watching a lot of Cheat and Chong in his off time. I suppose so. Oh, 4, 420 did just happen. That's also true. Backstage, Trisha's new underwear and is polishing Bubba's wood. She table. was. It was, a, it was a table. It was a table. Big Show and uh, Big Show versus Bull Buchanan and the Big what Boss Man. What a fucking hideous man. This match is fucking awful. <laughs> it's horrible. Un- if you took these same three dudes and said, go to a two, a, a 80 second match, I timed it. H- how many things do they fuck up at 80 seconds? If you told these three men, go wrestle for 80 seconds 100 times, it'd be better than this 100 times. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you watch the match? It was awful. There's a decent chance it would be better 50 times and worse 50 times. Who decided we'll have Big Show run the ropes over and over and over again? Well, they probably figured it's 80 seconds, so the guy can run for 80 seconds. I'm guessing Big Show didn't bring that up. They'd have probably done it every time. So they have this fucking horrendous match. Kurt saves the day by running in. No, he doesn't. Yeah. He runs in. He still can't figure out how to get Big Show for the Olympic Slam. They yeah. tried nine times before he finally got it. All I know is the match ended, so I'm happy. And APA came down, attacked Bull and the Boss Man. Yeah. So yes, this is a disqualification. Vince McMahon arrives at the building. Trish McMahon. Uh, Trish McMahon. Trish Stratus is uh, talking about she likes Bubba's big, strong legs. Mm. She must have seen his calves. Yeah. Does have big calves. Cavzilla, he called himself. Vince comes out for a promo. Recaps everything that happened last week. Says he's the only sane one in the family. He recaps what happened literally blow by blow. It takes a long time. Shane attacked Hunter. Hunter fell down. He'd been trying to pedigree my wife and finally stops and goes, What the hell is going on? I was like... What the hell is going on, Vince? This went a long ass That's time. a question I ask you every single fucking Monday and Tuesday. This was the opening 20-minute promo in the middle of the show. It was the, the top of the hour. Top of the, top of hour two, 20-minute promo. He said he was the only level-headed sane member of the McMahon family, Jim Ross. He almost screamed horse shit. <laughs> I can't remember what he screamed, but he said it in the way that he would have said horse shit. That's on the other great. show, actually. Later on. Warren's Hunter never did touch his wife again. So now Hunter and, and Vince are feuding. I, who knows? The fuck's going on? Sounds like it. One segment at a time, dude. Removes Shane. As he's got another job for tonight. Hunter needs to find a new partner. It's going to be a handicap match. I presume by the end of the show that this is all just a ruse. And you It know, worked out that way. He put Shane in as the ref to screw the guys. And Benoit's a better partner than Shane. That's which clear. Is in fact yes. Yes. A fact. Absolutely. And then tries to stir shit between The Rock and Austin. You know what For I got out hours. of this? But you know what? He shows footage of them feuding a year ago. He shows footage of Steve Austin getting run over. He points out that it just happened to be the Rock's rental car. Mm-hmm. And Rock wasn't there. But hey, 
there's one man who benefits more than anybody else for Steve Austin being gone. He actually didn't say that that person's Triple H, but <laughs> he meant Rock. <laughs> he said the Rock stole Steve Austin's spot. Stole his spot. And at the end of the day, when it was over, I just watched it and I thought, he is a very persuasive man. <laughs> you decided Rock should no longer he team He convinced Austin. me that maybe Steve Austin should not trust the Rock and vice versa. Yes. This went fucking forever. But it was a good interview. That's all I asked for. China had settled on a red dress and talked to Eddie in wearing a classic tuxedo. Then they remembered Eddie has a match in 10 minutes to get ready for, and they began to undress, and then they started having other kinds of fun. And apparently finished by the time the match came around. Al Snow and the Godfather. Okay, did that, do we <laughs> skip a year? I've been watching this head cheese bullshit for months now. <laughs> They're trying to come up with different names. They're trying to come up with different music. They're trying to get Blackman's personality to come out. And all of a sudden, I turn on this goddamn show. And, like, I hate having to rewind. I've only got so much time in my life. And I got to watch five hours of this shit on a Tuesday. I was so angry when I had to rewind to find out what the fuck was going on. I still don't know what the fuck was going on. Godfather is teaming up with Al yes. to face D'Lo and Blackman. Right. They, they swapped partners. What? Who? Why? There's what? something about D'Lo turning on Godfather on SmackDown. Yes. I'm not sure what happened to Head Cheese. I think they said, they, I think they said something happened at the pay-per-view, but they didn't show it. All I know is, I will say this, Al Snow made a way, way better pimp than I would have guessed. Yep. Whatever. I'm st- this was a load of horse shit. Where's Jim I, Ross to go, horse shit? I'm not arguing with any of that. It was a nothing match. Yeah, he was such a good pimp that when it was over, he danced with the women. And Godfather. Zero, absolute, minus zero heat. <laughs> and then they beat him up. This is death television. Yeah, Godfather no every longer way. teaming with us, no. Uh, did we mention the D-Lo one? No. D-Lo pinned down with a lowdown. Fuck. We have yet another Trish table about having uh, Trish promo about having sex with a table, on a table, whichever. <laughs> Eddie Guerrero versus Val Venus. Say, she could have sex with a the table. They have legs. I was going to make an innuendo or a subtle joke, but Craig went for the graphic description. Eddie Guerrero versus Val Venus. Lawler points out that Eddie's prom is the same night as Backlash. Well, shit. <laughs> That's convenient. He's going to have to skip the pay per view. <laughs> So they go out there, they had two minutes, so they did... They'll have to move backlash. I guess so. They had two minutes, so they did a ten-minute match really fast. China lays out Val. S.A. Rios and Lita come out. China lays out both of them. Lita at least gets to come back and hit a dive. S.A. never returned. Val hits a money shot and pins Eddie. A clean pin. This is a setup. Eddie Guerrero versus S.A. Rios on the pay-per-view. No. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Dude. So... Lita does his high cross and kills China. Yes. Smash her flatter than a pancake. And look green as grass. And then when the match was over and Rios and Lita hit the ring, they put the boots to Eddie. Kinda. These were the worst, both of them, Mm -hmm. the worst boots I've ever seen thrown in a wrestling ring. And I was watching the Iconics on Monday. Mm. This was horrible. Forget the Iconics. China was in the ring. Now you're telling me that Eddie is facing Essa Rios of all people in the pay-per-view? Yeah. yeah. You find out what Dave gave that. For the prestigious European title. The Castrol GTX Slam of the Week is the Dudley's powerbombing Lita through a table on SmackDown with China's help, which is why Lita was so sore at China here. Could have showed this before the segment. That would have made more sense. Dudley's versus Edge and Christian. So they're doing this match. And Bubba's in the ring calling guys queers. And TNA comes out carrying Trish on a table. Bubba Ray gets distracted. Mesmerized. Mesmerized. And they cut him off. And Bubba Ray Dudley is your woman beater in peril. And then they keep going. And nobody cared. I can't imagine why. That's weird. So, eventually the Dudleys made their comeback. Eddie Guerrero Esarillo's 2.5. Seven five stars, two and three quarter stars, better than average. 
Jesus. It's Eddie Guerrero. I know, but it's Esa Rios. Well, that's definitely like he, he could he could fly great, but yeah. his actual wrestling was horrendous. I'm sure Eddie knew that and worked around hey, it. Buddy Wayne got a three star match out of Esa Rios. That I gotta see. Three? Yeah, definitely. I'll check it out. Of course, out. I'm a little biased because I love Buddy. I was going to say, well, so do I, but I'm also a fair man. Like, It was on uh, Super Astros. He never got a three-star match out of Vinny. No. I <laughs> vouch for that. Okay. <laughs> Point proven. Uh, it was on like Super Astros from Tacoma. Check it out. Uh, anyway, uh, TNA comes out with a table. Trish is on it, and she distracts Bubba by stripping, basically. So they go over the 3D, but mid-move, Bubba lays eyes on Trish and is frozen. And the Edge and Christian pinned Demon with a spear, and that's that. I was so mad when they're doing this match, and I'm bored, and she comes out on a table, and he gets distracted, rolled up, and then kicks out. Yeah. And they got the heat on him. And then the whole point was she just distracted him a second time. Right. That he got pinned. Yeah. What a fucking waste of time. <laughs> Do you know how good the main event was, and they could have just added three more minutes to the main event, what and better. just ended with this fucking roll-up in this match? Yeah. They had to overthink it. We had a Rock promo. Yeah, Rock was backstage looking into the camera and talking into a microphone. Yeah. And it was awesome. He yeah. said nothing. And it was so great. Well, he said that him and Austin shouldn't trust each other, but they both uniformly don't trust Vince. Okay, you said that in 10 seconds. I was losing interest by the end. Rock said it for five minutes. And he could have said, come on for five more. Well, sure, but I'm pointing out that he did have a point. I guess. He had barely anything to talk about. Michael Cole was the interviewer. He has put highlights in his hair to look cooler. Frosted nice. tips? Yeah. Nice try. <laughs> he's trying, at least. Pretty sure he's had that for a while. I'm pretty sure that's new. Hunter warns Stephanie that somebody better have his back. And, in fact, someone did. Rock and Jericho come out. Hunter comes out, apparently, to go it alone. But then he, has a, he does have a mystery partner, and it is Chris Benoit. Then it is announced that the special referee is Shane McMahon. Michael Cole has been difficult to digest ever since he had his Frosted Tips debut in 1999. Where did you find this? I just Googled it. So there you go. Michael Cole Frosted Tips? Yeah, I Googled Frosted Tips Cole. And it came up. F fair enough. In the worst 90s haircuts ever. <laughs> That's pretty strong. I don't know about that. Well, he must have got him done we, again recently. We do watch wrestling. We see a lot no, of no, terrible No, no, this is a different one. I'm sorry. Different article. WWE's best there never was. Heel Michael Cole went too soon. Oh, no. That's, I, I disagree. This person here, Alfred, is wrong. Okay. I feel I need to find this person. Yeah, he's very wrong. Convince them of their mistake. Yeah. Anyway, so it's Rock and Jericho versus Hunter and Benoit with Shane as special ref. You know what's really cool? We have hit the era of Raw now, where every main event is an awesome match in front of a white-hot crowd. Yep. This was so fun. They're just beating the hell out of each other. It's great. It's all great. Finally, finally, The Rock makes his comeback. Hits a rock bottom, but Shane is intentionally distracted. So Rock just beats up Shane. He goes for the people's elbow on Benoit, but Vince comes out, kicks him in the nuts. Hunter hits a pedigree. Hunter makes a cover. And Shane, the evil heel referee... Counts fairly. One, two, three. And Hunter pins Rock. Can you imagine that Hunter pinned The Rock with his move with his move on this show? It's astonishing. Well, that's exactly what happened right there. Jericho and Benoit started, and they were on fire. Oh, yeah. yeah. The sawed-off midget and the guy who could be carried. Yes. They set the pace, and the other two guys decided, Jesus, we need to work tonight. And so... Rock and Hunter get in there. They work their asses off. And then Rock and Jericho are having a hit-the-ropes contest. <laughs> Who can hit these fucking ropes faster and harder? Yep. And classic tag team wrestling. Match was great. Could have deserved that three minutes they gave us in that Bubba Ray match. Should have been put here. But the heat was insane. And, yes, they gave Hunter the win because he's losing on Sunday. And, in fact, that is a spoiler. It is. It is. Yep. All right, let's do the uh, finishes report, Vinny. Okay, Brian. What, are you ready? I'm ready. The finishes on this show were DQ for ref attack, pin after run-in, pin after weapon shot, pin after one dude hit a move, but his brother got the win, 
DQ due to nut shot. Clean pin. Clean pin despite a whole lot of shit going on outside the ring. Pin after distraction. And pin after abundant interference. Yeah. That's what happened. Not as exciting as uh, last week. We got Taz on the line right now, so we want to get to him right away. Taz, how you doing today? Hey, Dave. What's going on, man? No, uh, not too much. Not too much. Uh, how was that? You know, you've been in, in, uh, you've been on main events on pay-per-views before, and now you were, like, uh, on this pay-per-view, which was probably the biggest, I'm sure the biggest money show probably in the history of wrestling. What's, what's your feelings going in being like a player on, on a big show as opposed to being, the, you know, like one of the, the main events? On, on a pay-per-view, but not as big. I mean, which like which made you more nervous, or, or if that's even the right term? Um, as far as nervousness, I um, kind of feel the same if I was main event in like an ECW pay-per-view or, uh, you know, working second, third, or, or first or fourth match for a WWF pay-per-view. But last night, I was a little bit more nervous than usual. We all were. It was WrestleMania 2000, and you could just feel the buzz throughout the whole day, actually the whole week doing the fan fest that... Um, you know, this was this was a mega mega event. I was man, it was not to sound corny, but I was just happy to be a part of it. I mean, um, as far as going from like a main event guy on a pay per view to doing a, a non main event, obviously, I I knew that coming in the door here. I mean, uh, I didn't expect to go into a main event right away because if you start out your career, your first two, three, four, five, six months main eventing, where are you going to be three years from now? You can't stay on top forever, so. Excuse me. I'm very happy with um, my placement right now, and uh, I'm very happy with my progress, and I feel the front office is also. Uh, I know that's not really a juicy uh, juicy comment. I mean, I'm sure the, the, the people, especially on the net and stuff and in the sheets and whatnot, would love to hear me say, Oh, man, I should be in a main event. I'm pissed off. No, I shouldn't be. Main, being a main eventer in ECW or WCW is completely different than being a main eventer in the WWF, and... Uh, you really know that when you're backstage and when you work for this company. I mean, this is, uh, you know, you're playing in front of 15,000 people, uh, 12,000 people, uh, 10,000 people on house shows, TV, you know, TV shows, 15,000 people. You know, I mean, it's like, this is big time, period. I mean, big, big time. I mean, guys like Rock and Hunter and, and, and Show and stuff. I mean, uh, Austin Undertaker. I mean, uh, you really feel that they're, they're big time major league players when, when you're here. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of cool to have now, now I have a goal to, to become that again, just like when I started in ECW. Uh, everybody thinks that, oh wow, Taz is a main eventer in ECW. But people forget that I didn't start out in ECW as a main eventer. You know, I mean, my first three and a half years in ECW, I, I wasn't, I was far from a main eventer. But see, people forget that. You know, you gotta evolve into, what Paul Heyman wanted me to, me to be, or now in this case, i got to evolve into what Vince McMahon wants me to be and what, what I can portray. And I'm completely at whole with where I am right now. In, in, uh, you know, in making the move several months back, um, you, know, you, you basically had the, the mentality, I guess, because um, you had kind of made the, the, the statement to me, yeah, before, actually before you made the move, that your decision was based on, I mean, obviously monetarily is a big, is a big, big thing, but like being a big fish in a smaller pond or being like a smaller fish in a bigger pond. And what was, you know, beside from the monetarily thing, I mean, what was the reasoning for you to make the move? The main, main reason, and this is not a slap in the face towards ECW or Paul Heyman, because I owe Paul so much. He, he got me here, and I never expected to be here. I, I was very content staying in ECW. I was making great money there, <laughs> excuse me, and he was taking good care of me and my family. But the main reason was my last you know, six months in ECW, I started to get um, uh, very complacent. I started to get, I felt like I was getting lazy. I felt like there was no more challenge. I had done everything there is to do there. I'd won every belt. I'd been pushed to the moon. There was like, what more to do? You know, what more to do? I mean, uh, you know, part of, um, a major part of being a, a successful pro wrestler is having a passion when you hear your music hit and you walk out there. Uh, people who know me personally know that I, I definitely always wanted to perform in front of monstrous audiences and I always wanted to wrestle in beautiful arenas and I feel like I've earned my stripes to, to be able to take a shower if I have a match or be able to not have a, you know, filthy locker rooms. Uh, but that wasn't the main reason. The, 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 those filthy locker rooms and those smaller arenas 
uh, made me a good living for a long time and got me to this level. Um, but the main reason in a nutshell is I started to feel a little bored. You know, my training was affected by it. I wasn't training as hard. I wasn't, I just wasn't, I started to lose that passion. You know, now coming here, you know, it's like I'm getting a whole, a whole new realm of people to work with. You know, different people I've never worked with or people I haven't worked with in years and, you know, uh, the challenge of not being the top guy and, and politics don't play a major role in this company, uh, unlike other companies. So, I mean, um, it, if you start getting bored, if you start getting like it's too easy for you, then, then you have no challenges and then you can't, you know, can't achieve nothing. And that's, I'm the type of guy that I want to challenge and <laughs> let me tell you something, I got a hell of a challenge here. <laughs> What's a what do you have do you have like a short term goal as far as like people that you wanna you wanna be in there with or uh you know, a direction that you wanna go or is right now you're just kind of uh waiting waiting for something to be given to you, I guess, or something. Well tonight after uh, I don't know if I'm really allowed to expose what's happening tonight, but tonight I kinda uh, I'm heading in a direction that I wanna be in right now and uh uh I'm starting uh, an angle tonight with someone, so um, someone that, that it's going to be real cool, uh, and I think we're going to have some really strong matches, and it's, it's a pretty, uh, it's going to be a pretty entertaining program. Um, so I'm happy about that, and, and short-term goal is a good way to put it, Dave, because that's the way you do this. You know, when you work here, you know, you, after I do this program, I'm hoping to go to to maybe somebody else. I mean, for me, the main people is hard to do right now. I mean, I, I definitely would like to go back to do stuff with Kurt Angle again. I mean, I feel like me and Kurt have a really good. Uh, a good uh, uh, mixture in there together. We play off each other real well. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with guys like Eddie Guerrero, who I think is becoming one hell of a heel here fast. You know, uh, 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 the, you know, Benoit, obviously, Chris Jericho and I, I think, can do some really good business. I mean, I like to stay in the mix with those type guys, and I, and I, and I think that we can do some really cool stuff. Do you expect to get like uh, more mic time now that you have a new program? I guess it's starting to start tonight. Yeah, I, I think that's going to start coming. I mean, I you know, so many people like on my website. I mean, they <laughs> message board. Everyone's like, "Why don't you talk more?" And I, I, I hear it all the time everywhere I go. Why don't they let you talk? Why don't you let let you talk? I mean, uh, I had to prove myself. I believe there's the reason why I wasn't talking. I had to prove myself as a competitive worker and a hard working wrestler and to get my character over as a kick-ass, no-nonsense type of, you know, street guy, street dog, what have you. And now, um, you know, it's a pre-tape going on right now. Um, <laughs> you're getting it live, right? Um, what do you call it? Uh, I, um, I think that uh, my time will definitely start coming real soon. Um, uh, and and I'm... I'm I'm happy about that because I'm I'm really anxious to start doing that and and I think the front office wants me to start doing it too. And I actually was wondering this myself is um um did you get any of that glass on that closing spot in your in your match last night in your eye or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit. Um, they 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 had taken it out with a like a wet cheek tip or some crap. They, I got a, a I think a lot went in it and then it came out as I was rubbing my eye. I was on the mat. Um. Uh, it, it got me pretty good. It didn't cut my eye, and it didn't cut my eyeball. I was lucky. It just uh, there was a small piece stuck in my eye that they'd taken out. But uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad though. I, I made it look worse. I made it look worse than what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they say I can't uh, sell. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's what's your feeling coming? Uh, what's your feeling coming off of that show? Was it as an experience? How would you compare it to say uh, you know an, an ECW pay per view after the fact? That's that's a tough question. A good question, but a tough question. I mean, ECW pay per views. Um, you know, I mean, I, a lot of times I had the weight on my shoulders. I mean, it's kind of cool not having the weight on your shoulders, but I also kind of miss it. You know what I mean? So because I was used to it. Um, but the feeling after this show was uh, amazing because it, it was a big success. You know, we had a we had a post WrestleMania party at the hotel for for the staff and VIPs and stuff, and you could just feel the electricity throughout. You know, the building from from the boys to to, to the people who were behind the scenes to the office. You know, everybody was just so happy, and uh, it just felt like um like you know we won the big game that type of thing you know it was a real cool success party everybody just eating drinking having a good time and all that stuff and it was a really cool feeling and i'm new here so it was like it just felt cool to be it's a real team atmosphere here you know it really is as far as the hardcore battle royal i was um 
at first when I was told I was involved with it, and I seen all the you know all these guys involved. I'm like, well, man, this is this could be a uh, this could this could be bad because there's so many bodies involved. A lot of times when that happens, it gets to become a cluster, you know. Um, but it ended up, and each minute that ticked by during that match, uh, it was cool. I mean, and I watched the replay last night, and the camera. I mean, watching on TV doesn't do any justice. I mean, if if you were there, I mean, <laughs> anywhere in the ringside, man, we all were just tattooing each other. Believe me. Uh, in ECW, I've done a lot of stuff like that, worked real stiff with guys. But this was this was stiff. I mean, <laughs> we were going. I mean, believe me, 15 minutes, too. So it was, uh, we were all kind of banged up from it, all of us. Uh, a couple of guys had to get stitched up. Uh, Crash Holly had to get some stitches. Uh, Pete Gaff had to get some stitches. So I got a big lump on my head. A couple of guys are screwed up. So, I mean, you know, but it, you know, we all knew we had to go in there and work real tight. Uh, the match wasn't a heavily pushed match on, on the show. But uh, uh, I think Jim Ross put it best uh, the night before I seen him at the hotel, and he kind of felt like that match was going to be a sleeper, and 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 I felt like we did that. Now in that that, that very finish at the the the, the pin at the buzzer, mm -hmm. and on on TV it was like one two, and it sort of was like, was, were you were you in the right? Was was that how it was supposed to go down? Was he supposed to like be putting his hand down for three and your body in the way, or I hate to say it, I hate to say this, but I have no comment about that. Okay. I'm sorry. You have to find it out from those stores, but I, I, I have no comment. Because it was, I mean, I, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, this is this is this is from uh, Mike in Syracuse, and he's talking about an interview you did for our video, and you talked about uh, you were very disappointed how Perry Saturn left ECW and that you would never want to work in the same company with him, and also comments about Aaron O'Grady, you know, Crash Holly. Um, now that these men are in the WWF. Have your opinions of either of them changed? First off, I I don't remember saying that about Perry, to tell you the truth, saying I'd never want to work with the same company again. I'm not saying I didn't say it. I might have said that, but that had to be quite a while ago if I said it. Since then, I mean, for the past two years, Perry and I have definitely, we're friends. Friends fight, you know, And but when wrestlers fight, oh, they got heat. You know, that's the way it is in this business. You can't just be friends and fight. Like, if you and your friend from the gym get into an argument, it's just an argument. You know, when you're a pro wrestler, it's all over the place. Oh, man, these guys got to eat with each other. They don't like each other. I mean, we're friends. Friends fight. Perry and I are completely cool with each other. And as far as Crash Holly, I mean, my first day here, he walked right up to me, shook my hand. He goes, listen, I just like bury the hatchet. I don't want any heat. And I hope everything's cool. And he was just such a professional and a gentleman. He came right up to me. And I was going to do the same thing to him, but he beat me to the punch. And me and him were just completely cool with each other. And I think he'd tell you the same thing. Were you, are you are you surprised at, at uh, how well he's done? I mean, as far as like a guy who you know, I mean, it's funny because it's like uh, whatever it was a year earlier, he was in ECW and and didn't really even and didn't really make it there. Went home and then he went to the WWF, which is um, you know got a lot stiffer competition as far as bodies and stuff. And he's actually you know not that he's a superstar there, but he's made it. You know, he's a he's a guy on the team and a clear. You know, I mean, he's over because everyone's over. You know, I but I mean, he is over. I, Dave, I'll tell you, I feel he's a superstar. I feel, and, and this is you know, like a kiss-ass thing, but I feel 99.9% .9 of our locker room are superstars. I mean, that's the way this company's booked. That's one of the reasons why I came here. It's written that way. Everybody means something when it comes to that damn curtain, and that's the bottom line. And Crash, if you don't think he's a star, come to house shows and watch the pop he gets when his music hits, and he walks out there with that scale and stuff like that. And every every time we go to this guy gets a great reaction and 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 this 24 7 thing that he's been doing has gotten him over even more because it's perfect for his character you know it really is now if um uh, uh a character like 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 mine or a character like a i don't know uh, shit a character like a uh a chris benoit hypothetically i mean you can't pull off a 24 7 thing i don't think so anyway because you, you, you know these type of characters ain't really going to run from people. But Crash's character fits perfect. You know, he's this little guy that's just scooting and running from everybody, and then he always ends up on top. So, you know, it's uh, uh, I think it's really made him. But he's a hard worker, man. I, I mean, I'm the one to refer him to Paul Heyman to, to bring him into. To uh, Well, Spike told me, and I told Paul about him to bring him into, you know, into the company, uh, into um, ECW. I mean, the guy's a very talented guy. He's always been, and just now they're giving him an opportunity, and then he, he's scoring with it. Were you uh, disappointed at all that the uh, Kurt Angle thing went only, you know, I mean, it started out fairly strong, and then it kind of, I don't know if it got dropped or something, but they took you guys in different directions? Yeah, I, I was a little, I don't want to say disappointed. I was kind of hoping they would keep going with us. 
But, you know, I was really new. I'm new. I'm still new, but I was real new, new then. I was only here a couple of weeks. And uh, I don't know what it was. I, I don't know really why they, um, you know, when you're in the WWF, you know, a couple of uh, months, you don't really question no one, Dave. You know, <laughs> you're not going to do that. You know, before you come in, you might think you're going to. But the tone is set when you're here. You know who the bosses are and the main boss. You know your role, and you try and fit in. And then, and then as you earn your stripes a little bit, you pay your dues a little bit, you try and, you know, get over more and more, and, and, and Kurt and I, I, I got a feeling that eventually the company will go back to doing an angle with him, and I, I, I think that, I really, like I said earlier, I think that we play off each other real well, and we work pretty good together. Um, I'm trying to think, what, uh, as, as far as, like, your departure from ECW, um, did you expect, uh, just go back to the thing in Chicago, that that night in Chicago where you lost the title, yeah. I know you had three or four matches afterwards, but that would be that was that was that was kind of like the big hurrah. Everything else was, was sort of anticlimactic. I felt um, everything else was a waste of time. But yeah, okay. now, it, 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 in, in that one, in, in that one, what were your thoughts as far as coming out that night? I mean, did you did you know that everyone was going to know you were leaving? Because you know, and 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 just the way they reacted and the fact that they basically turned on you at the beginning, and then they were all with you at the end, which was kind of a unique situation. Yeah, it was unique. Uh, when I walked out, I knew that most of them would, would know that I was leaving, and I figured I'd get a you-sold-out type chant, which is a big rock. But um, they're going to chant something, but I didn't expect every one of them to do it, and it was, like, overwhelming. And i got to be honest, I just like a puss or nothing, but it was, it was you know, before before I took the towel off my head, it was, it was affecting me. I, I, it was, like, upsetting because I gave so much to those people for six friggin' years, you know, from merchandise to, to helping train guys to being a team player and being a company man and being a competitor in the ring and busting my ass, coming back from a neck injury that would have put most guys down for good. And, man, they just forgot. They just forgot. And I got pissed. And by the time I hit the ring, I was just like, frig em. I'm just going to go out here, have a good time with Mike Awesome and, and Tanaka. You know, and, and, and I, at that point, I didn't really care about doing the people their money's worth. And I never done that before. I didn't care about them because they didn't care about me. And I got pissed. And and uh, I did my job. Uh, and I felt like it was the right thing to do. And so did Paul to go you know, endorse the new champ as in Mike Blossom. And, and, and then they decided to get with me when, when like they forgave me for leaving type deal because I handed over the belt. So then I'm like, okay, fine. I forgive you for you know, healing me when I walked out. You know, <laughs> you know it's you know, it's a time, it's a, it's a moment I'm not going to forget, obviously. But, but um, you know, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, people are always going to pass judgment on you. And, you know, I, I, I made this move for the to better for my career. Uh, and that is not just money because it wasn't a money thing. The deal that Paul and I were working out was a, was a great deal, you know, and I just felt like it was time to move on. Now, you you just mentioned a second ago, you know, coming back, um, there was that lag period because that was, uh, what was it, like August, and you started in WWF, I guess, January, and then you had a few matches in ECW, and that and you kind of indicated that you, you didn't, you thought were kind of a waste of time, and then, you know, several months bef before starting actually with WWF, um, I guess it was kind of a, an agreement with, I don't know if it was Paul and Vince and you or how that all went down, but how, explain how that, that whole period went down. Well, when, when I was, after I was in Chicago... Yeah, when you pretty much had agreed to go and before you actually started, you know, it was a couple months period there. You're talking about when I kept wrestling those matches. Well, it, was a, it was a tense period. It was tense between me and Paul because I, it wasn't that I didn't want to go and put the guys over. I, I didn't care about that, even though all these people out there that think they know me and don't know crap about me think that I care about putting people over, and I don't, and I prove that and prove it time and time again. Uh, I didn't. I didn't, wasn't comfortable with, with going in there and working these matches because, like you said earlier, you hit the nail on the head. I felt it was anticlimactic also. That was such a strong, strong moment in Chicago when I, when I left that, that, that ringside area. And to come back now and wrestle Sabu and wrestle Awesome again, you know, and wrestle Van Dam, it was just like, ugh, you know, why? Just, just that old style, you know, 1980s, oh, you got to put guys over on the way out. Okay. You know, it was it's just I felt like it was me and Paul were on completely two different pages with that, you know, and, and, and I was not happy about it. I I did I never said I don't want to do it. I did tell him I wasn't comfortable doing it and emotionally more or less. And I felt like I wasn't gonna give the people their money's worth. But, you know, it all worked out, it's water under the bridge.
Now, um, as, as far as were you, were you frustrated at all that, uh, you know, it was such a long, you know, a long, I mean, because like a lot of times with wrestlers, you know, if they're off TV for three weeks, they kind of start getting the jitters, you know, because you were actually off TV as a push commodity for a couple of months before your WWF start. Um, did, yeah. did you, like, I'm not saying worry about it because, I mean, there's nothing to worry about, but just kind of get that itch of, like, God, you know, I wish I was in there right now, especially with WWF business being so hot at that period. Yeah, I was. I was definitely antsy, you know, but I knew that, you know, uh, Vince would pick the spot for me to debut. Uh, Paul having me sit home, you know, the man paid me. You know, he did offer so I didn't form ring rust, that I could work house shows and stuff and just to keep it in the ring, and, and he did offer me that, and I give him credit for that, but I, I said no thanks. And I just took the time to hang out with my family, and, you know, my, my son was uh, only a couple months old at the time and stuff, and spent time with my wife and, and just train and stuff like that get better shape and heal up injuries, you know. Uh, it was a frustrating time, though. No, it really was, because we were just sitting home doing nothing, you know, and I wasn't used to doing that. Um, having a son, did that play, or what What? What? Uh, what part did that play in your decision to go to WWE? Or no part, did they play no part, or was it part of the motivation? Wait, say that one more time. I lost you a little bit. You know what? Having your first son, did that, how much, did that play uh, a part in your motivation to want to go to the WWF, or was that not even part of the deal? No, a, a little bit. Not not really, Dave, to tell you the truth. It wasn't like a major part of it. It, was about, it really wasn't a major part of it. I mean, Paul always took care of me financially. I was very happy with the money he was paying me for, for, for quite a while, and it wasn't that. I mean, yeah, granted, when you work for Vince, you know, there's a lot more financial security for your family, obviously, but, you know, Paul's going to do great, and, and his company's going to survive, and, and, and believe me, a lot of people here at WWF are rooting for him. Uh, that's the truth, and uh, um, I think he's going to do great. And, and if I decide to stay in ECW, I mean, it, I, I felt the same way. I mean, uh, my my son being born, it was a small portion, but not really, well, not not a big portion at all. When uh, when Eddie Guerrero and uh, Chris Benoit, Perry Saturn, Dean Malenko all came over uh, at the same time, and you had just started. Um, did you feel good in that, you know, one of the stigmas, if you had a stigma going in, it was your height, and you now you had four guys who were, you know, your size, you know, and, yep. um, you know, or your, or your height size anyway, right, right. Um, that you had guys to work with, they're all, you know, really, really good wrestlers right, that you could right. do programs with, and mm -hmm. you wouldn't, you know, did that make you feel more comfortable, or was it just like, uh, you know, uh, or was it not even, you didn't think about it? Uh, good question. In a way, I did feel good about it, because then it's like, well, look, you know, here's these other guys that are on the six foot, you know what I mean? But then there was a part of it was like, you know, I thought it was cool coming in here because all these guys are six four, six five, six six. you know what I mean? For the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, I felt like I could stick out. And then when the radicals came in, it was like, <laughs> I couldn't stick out because we were all similar height, you know? So, you know, it, it, you know what I mean? Because even though I wasn't as big as the other guys, I figured that was not as tall, I could stand out, you know, but uh, well, I'm glad those guys came in. I mean, it's great for our business, and, and for WCW, let four so talented workers, uh, young, strong workers go. I mean, it's just completely idiotic on their part. I'm just glad that, you know, we got those guys. Uh, Taz, I, understand, I know that uh, we've got to head to a commercial. I know that you've got to head to uh, a TV taping. Yeah, so live I want, TV. I, yeah. I know that's right. Well, that's right. Live TV in just about an hour, uh, about yeah. two hours, I guess, for the Raw show. Um, and you're going to be on the show, and uh, I guess we'll see in just a couple hours uh, your new program. Yep. And I want to, I want to thank you very much for uh, doing the show from uh, the arena. Hi, right, Dave. No problem. And I'm sorry we didn't touch base a couple, like a month or so ago, but my schedule. It got so hectic, you know what I mean? So all the fans that thought I was coming on, I want to apologize to them and to you too, okay? Okay, thanks very much. We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, man. Take care. WrestleMania transcends the business as we know it. This is what our business is all about. WrestleMania, WrestleMania, WrestleMania. This is going to get over. This is going to get over. It's WrestleMania, baby. And here we go. Oh, God, he rolls. Good God. No, no. This is going to hurt. The most powerful. The most intimidating. The most dominant force that's ever existed in wrestling and wrestling history. This is a war at WrestleMania. I love it.
WrestleMania. 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 California, City of Angels, it's gonna be trouble, uh. Alright, check this out. California, City of Angels, uh. It's gonna be trouble, uh. This all my life, right, bro? Knock the windows. Right, bro. Uh, California. Knock the windows. 